listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. We're going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On the big, nice, burgundy snowboard. All right. Here we are for another episode of the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. Everybody knows first things first. Got to ask Stony Buds, how are we doing today? So good, my dog. Whew, that's Woo. beautiful. That was a good one. To my left, we got Freddie Perry, all the way from Norway in the booth. Freddie, how are we doing? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I uh. like that. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, Freddie, if you guys are unfamiliar, you might be asking yourself, what is a Freddie Perry? Well, Freddie Perry is an anomaly. You can't really put a pin on who he is. He's one of a kind. He's an incredible snowboarder sitting on a phenomenal resume of video parts. He's pro for DWD, Dinosaurs Will Die, an incredible snowboard company. He's an entertainer, a world-class skit creator. He's creator of Bench Press and Bench Heaven, very prestigious. And he's Jesse Burtner's favorite snowboarder as of recently. So that's pretty pretty high on the accolades list. But um, I guess first things first, should we start off with a smelling salt? Ooh. I like that. I like that as well. All I right. Like I that. probably won't, but I mean, I've tried it, but like. What do you mean you, you're not going to do one? Oh, f- duh. Oh, you won't he like it. Out. You'll, out. you'll like it. He hit one at a Christmas party not uh. too long ago. Start it off, Fred. Squeeze it. There you go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> he went oh in deep, dude. <laughs> dude. He went in two fingers spread and just jammed oh it up Lord. there. You went, oh. you went deep. Oh, my God. Oh, that one's got some zinc. It's so good. It's a good so batch. T- terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> what did tra- oh. Travis say? Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the bomb hole. <laughs> that is true. All right. You know what I want to start with, Fred? Oh, my God. I'm crying already. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the bench. So you, you, you did a movie called Bench Best based yeah. around benches. You've done Bench Heaven, an event based on benches. Why the bench? Why the bench? I was on an air blaster trip in Boston, and we hit a couple benches, and I just had a bunch of fun when I was doing it. Also, I was pretty scared because those things are, like, sketchy because you have to be really quick with it, you know? But I got, a, like, a couple cool quick clips. I was hyped on that. Went home. It was Christmas. And I was going to bed, and I, like, started thinking about, like, a video part idea and that, like, you call it something, you know? This part's called la, 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 la. And I just thought of the word bench press, and I just couldn't sleep, and I stayed up for four hours, like, jotting down notes about, like, what this could be. It was just an idea for, like, my own video part. Cool, I'll just film benches. It's called Bench Press. That's genius. Oh. And then I, like, talked to a bunch of friends about it, and they're like, hey, can I be in it? And I'm like, sure. And, like, other people are like, hey, I want to I want a bench clip, and I want a bench clip. So then it just turned in slowly into, like, an actual movie. And then that's when I started, like, hitting up people, like, all right, if we're going to do this, let's, let's do it for real. So I started hitting up, like, all my favorite snowboarders. This is the idea, like, a big-ass email. Here are the rules. This is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Do you want to be in this? Like, do you believe or not? A lot of people said yes, uh, and some people actually did film clips and whatever. But mostly it was just like, hey, now we're going to film on these uh, simple things that you can find anywhere that don't have to be hard to do, but they are really hard to do. So we just found out uh, an, an early model was uh, never underestimate a bench because mm. we would do that all the time, especially if there's like multiple ones or like stuff that you have to jump over into a bench or the other way around, you would get smoked. Mm. Also, it's for like, it was more like approachable for people. Like everybody can like, oh, there's a bench. Oh, you can snowboard on that. Cool. I didn't know that. And you'd have to get like mad creative to like get cool stuff, you know? The picnic table was already done, so you went bench on him. Yeah, we went bench on him. Dude, everybody loves a bench. Ever met anybody that doesn't like a bench? You could sit on them, chill on them, talk to people. And you them. can bring them around and stick them places? And That was one of the rules. You cannot do that. Oh, you can't. It has no, to be natural in the I'm wild. I'm a spot fanatic, and that's part of the game is like it has to be a spot. It's got to be like, natural. No spot mods. You can't build – oh, I hate spot mods. You can't build a bench – because that would be easy, and then put it in front of a rail, put it after this, put it after that. So that, that was like one easy. of the rules for the whole thing. So would you say your mantra in the streets is play it how it lies? Mm. Yes. I mean, we would move benches, but like it would be like, oh, there's a bench over there. Like It's in the zone. Like We're not putting it on a car and driving it somewhere. Mm. You know. So, so what about 
in front of a rail if it was in the proximity yeah, of a rail. In a park. If it was close, then like, sure, like there's some gray area to mm. this thing, but definitely like you're not building benches and like. I think I can shoot around. a couple holes in this guy's bench proximity. Me too. With your Me also, too. <laughs> dude, there's holes because listen to this. Because <laughs> yeah, what if what if I went and nobody knew it, and I stuck benches around close yes, to all these cool things, and then I just hey, tipped it's an off. System. I tipped off Chris, is, like, hey, I go check out this park. You know what I mean? You could fool me easily, but then if I found out, you wouldn't only lose my respect as a snowboarder. We would keep it. But also as my friend. Mm. Maybe I wouldn't even tell and anyone I, I did that. it. It would be like in Salt Lake, I just put benches all over and not yeah. even tell people. I mean, there are other a holes. Bench whisper. Like really sick spots, yeah. too. We had rules that was like, or I had rules, uh, no red cameras, just because like, what am I going to do with this? Fight? Like, there's no point. Yeah. No GoPro. That was very, like, iPhone all day. Any camera doesn't matter. I'll like make it work, but no GoPro, no red. <laughs> but then Torstein Hogmo sends me GoPro footie. I'm gonna use it. You know, <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> it's that's pretty awesome. fucking sick. Why yeah. not GoPro? I mean, I don't know. I just, kinda... Back then, I just thought it looked dumb, and people didn't know how to use it. It's just like shaky, silly. Like... That's some snobby shit. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty but I'm snobby. I like the. W- it has to be, you know. But then again, we have iPhone stuff, but you can make that look cool. The whole red cam thing, I understand, because you have this epic. House is it costs as much as a house to get this camera, and then you load yeah, it up to your phone. My, yeah, fill my hard drive up and like yeah, two it, clips. It's crazy. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, okay, I got a guest question from the uh, leader of Dinosaurs Will Die, fearless leader Sean Genevieve. Here we go. Yo, Fred, it's a good buddy Sean here. I don't have an hour to talk your ear off today. That's Grendy's and E Stone's job. So I'll keep it brief with a question here. I want to know your thoughts on artistry and athleticism. The title of your project, Bench Press, sounds like it's a training video. And a lot of people refer to snowboarding as a sport. But the way that you plan your video projects and ride your board seems very artistic. So would you consider yourself an athlete or an artist? And where do those two intersect? And how many random people do you think clicked on that bench press YouTube link expecting to see you working out? I mean, I was kind of working out in there, you know, I was doing jumps and I was, I was sweating and crying and bleeding during that whole thing. So definitely working out. Of course, that guy's going to hit me with like some fady question. Uh, Speaking of Jenna, we talked about these uh, yesterday and he Thought I should bring you guys a gift, which would be pepper spray. <laughs> we <were> just, <laughs> so instead of like, glad you we didn't do bring like that. a round of salts, and then after we could just go a little like straight in the spray eyes, spray each other in the face, face ourselves. <laughs> I mean, artist, yeah. athlete. I mean, snowboarding's a sport, but it's also not. But it's also sport. But most of all, like, we're, I'm not a ripped freak that's just like doing, like actual sports but it's fucking physically demanding it's dangerous it's risky it's extreme sports and as far as projects go i mean it's art in the form of like that i want to make something that's different because if it's just snowboarding trick 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 la 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 it gets boring so that's kind of where like the bench press that stuff kind of fades in so the art in my in my uh, sphere is like creativity you know so making stuff that is interesting or funny uh, or different just so it doesn't like blend in with everything else uh am i an artist am i a snowboarder i don't know half 50 50 or like 45 45 and then the rest of it is just like an idiot what about i would say entertainer Mm, thank you sometimes do you that's a that's an interesting thing thinking about you know generally if you think about a video part people want to get tricks they think about the difficulty of the trick the spot but you seem to understand the importance of entertainment value. So do you view yourself as like an entertainer slash snowboarder athlete? I mean, that's not what I'm trying to do or like going for. Like I do want to get legit shit. That's 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 like 100% it. But it has to be – I'm definitely thinking what it's going to look like as far as like is this – so I'm trying something that's super fucking gnarly. Does it look like it's gnarly though? So just the other day, me and Ted were trying to film a trick, and it just looked slow and dumb and, like, shitty. It's like, this is way too risky for what it is, you know? So it's not worth it. And 
the entertainment part comes more more naturally. I feel like besides if there's a, a concept or an idea for it to be funny, then mostly it's just like me being an idiot. And oh, if somebody filmed it, then fine, you know. Besides skits and all that sh stuff, obviously. Maybe if if you think I'm an entertainer, that's super cool. I like it. I like making people laugh. This is a good feeling. Frederick, I like the entertainer, people mm -hmm. making me laugh. So. I have a Patreon yeah. question because we were talking about dinos. Mm. This is from Travis Kerr, and uh, would love to hear how you got hooked up with the Dinos family. Good question, Travis Kerr. So there is a distribution company based out of Trondheim in Norway called Jump Club, which is a major shout out to those guys. Ran by, uh, used to be ran by Odde Sansta and Joe Fossheim, two very good friends of mine who kind of now like it's faded over to my other homie, Andreas Gronk, because they're old. You know, they got kids and shit, and they only did it for, like, as a hobby, kind of. Like, they like cool, legit snowboarding, so they got in, like, Gnarly, Air Blaster, Crab Grab, Dinosaurs Will Die. They wanted to bring, like, these cool brands to Norway. And uh, I just, like, they just started hooking me up with boards slowly and surely, and then um, I went on a trip to the States with some friends to ride Big Bear, and I just, like... Talked to Jeno, barely like, hey, maybe you should link up while I'm over here. So I went up to Canada and met up with Jeno. And then from there, it was just like, I was in, you know? Just like, hey, show your face and don't be an idiot and try to snowboard a bunch. And then that was sort of in a think thanky way, too. That's when I met Beresford for the first time. And he's like, oh, sure, you can have clips in my video. Like, <laughs> it's, it just all faded in together. And then I met Bertner, and it's just like, holy shit, now I'm back the next year, and then I'm back again, and then they come over there, and it just, like, fades in, you know? So uh, thanks to Jump Club guys, and also Jeno, just, like, for that shit, to put me on dinos, which I, at the time, was, like, then I thought it was the coolest brand. I'm not saying I think now, but then definitely the coolest brand. It's still cool. <laughs> you're you're the... <laughs> Jeno was saying last night you are the longest-running team rider still with the board right wow. now? Wow. Yeah, I think I've been on... Dinos for 11 years. Whew. That's Pretty incredible. Because we're, we're going to Mission Ridge next week. And it was like, holy shit, you got 20 boys in a 12-person crib. I mean, I hope you're lining up the big bed for the big boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's been there the longest? Longevity, huh? The captain. He's yeah. the captain, captain of the team. Of the team. <laughs> General's like, man, maybe you should get a hotel room. That, now we're talking. <laughs> there's there's 20 riders? They got a jacuzzi? In no, it's house? just like, they yeah, got, yeah. we're squatting up, you know? Packing it'll be the whole fun. team in. Yeah, it'll be fun. Well, let's run it back because you're from Norway. Uh, I want to hear about, you know, how you grew up and where you're from. So I'm from a very, very small place on the west coast of Norway that never gets snow. That's called Hognista uh, and an area called Yaren. It's like kind of the flat farmer's land of Norway, close uh, by the coast. And um, I grew up there with my mom and dad. My dad is from New Zealand, which is why I have this kind of New Zealandish accent, which I... Normally have 100%, but now I've been in the States for like six weeks, so it fades you know, a little bit. And Americans are like, well, what did you say? Uh, I have three sisters. Like I said, we, don't, we didn't get any snow, so we moved. My parents bought a hotel-ish motel gig in Telemark, which is close to us, like in the middle of the country. And that's kind of where I got seriously into snowboarding because we had six months of snow. And, uh, I mean, in the beginning, my dad would like, I couldn't do the lift, so he would carry me up the hill. And I couldn't go down the hill, so he would just end up carrying me down the hill also. So it was just like a shit show. So kudos for these guys to even fucking bother taking me up there, little crybaby. You can't do it. Crashing into people who's like doing picnics and shit. It was a shit show. Uh, so then I rode at Gautafal, tiny, tiny resort. I mean, this is a very small place. Like the, the place I grew up, I was in a class. My class was six boys. Like this is rural, you know. And we moved to an even, like, just the same size place, you know. But there I would snowboard five days a week. My parents would take me night riding. I'd just snowboard a bunch with my two two best friends. Um, and, uh, yeah, from there I got into the Norwegian Snowboard Academy or whatever it's called in English, where pretty much all the, the big boys were gone. That was, like, kind of the shit where you would go. Like, Torstein was there and Mikkel Bang had gone there, like, all that shit. So that's pretty much... Uh, How far was that from That was grew up? That was... Uh, that's like even further up in the middle of the country. So that's like... You're, you're on the train for like four hours, you know? That's I'm, also in the middle of nowhere. I'm so curious on your theory. 
if you look at Norwegians, you guys are just generally dominant contest freakazoids. Like if you if you look at like a, an X Games, you know, top ten, like there's going to be a handful of Norwegians in there. Um, why the hell are you guys such freakazoids on the boards? Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe because we have snow. <laughs> First of all, like. There's freakazoids everywhere, but it's only countries that actually have snow that are freakazoids. Norwegians like to think they're best in everything. So, oh, we win every cross-country gold in the Olympics. Yeah, but, like, there's no snow in a lot of places in the world. Like, that's why we're good at it, because cross-country skiing isn't, like, a big culture. We're not that good at running. Oh, we are actually pretty good at running. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm saying. You, get what I, you, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but the snowboarding part, I don't – I have no idea. Because the parks are good, but they're not, like, insane. Like, the parks in the States are way, way better. But then you have the Finnish guys who are, like, riding on brick literally all the time. I would say those guys are, like, equally crazy as the Norwegian slope style pipe guys. We don't have any pipe guys anymore because there's no pipes in Norway. So Not one in the whole country. There's, like, a mini pipe. And they had – they used to have a super pipe in uh, Trivon, like, the Alzo Resort. But it wasn't getting used enough for them to, like, actually spend money on making it. But You know, I think a huge part of the culture there that's really cool is – let's say it snows in the States – I think generally a lot of people lock themselves in their house and they don't go outside. But it seems like in Norway or Scandinavia as a whole, people tend to go outside and do stuff in the cold weather. Yeah. And that might be... That uh, might be one of, yeah, that's one one of the reasons. Yeah, that's 100% a thing. Like the old age thing you've heard like a thousand times that Norwegians are born with skis on their legs, la, 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 la. I haven't, I I've wasn't. actually never heard never that. Never heard that I wasn't. <laughs> okay, that's like, a, that's like a thing they love saying. Oh, they love to say it. Oh, oh he was born with skis on his feet. Look at I the little Freddy. Born. Right out yeah. the womb with skis. I actually uh, started snowboarding before I started skiing. I, like, I never slalom skied. I'd cross from country skied, but I'd never like, done slalom or anything. So if you put me out there in the woods, I would be sketchy. <laughs> that would be sketchy. These Nordic zones, though, you just always have snow, so you got to be outside. Like yeah. Canada's the same way. You'll see babies and strollers out in the yeah. but fresh still, storm day. You not, know? not as much, not as much though. Even as I feel like Scandinavia is. Well, yeah, more, yeah. yeah, definitely. When we're out there on street trips, it's insane how many people but are that, outside. Uh, that snowboard academy was pretty cool. Like that was like a big deal back then to get in because it's only five spots and you had to have good grades and shit to get in because it's like they're trying to be good. Like a good decent school also, and I remember like at the you had if you if you had good enough grades you could come to like the test there's like a like you had to snowboard for a day and you got divided oh, up tryouts. into groups yeah tryouts straight you get up judged and I uh we, you got divided up into like random groups and then the next day they put you in new groups and then the next day I was kind of like oh these guys are really good and also the group I was des- like given was Torstein Horgmo was like the coach for that group so I was like damn. This is a good sign because yesterday I was just like we were just spread out, but today I'm like running with Torstein. Sick. Like rumor had it that these were the guys that already got in, kind of thing. It's pretty sick. Who was who was the crew? <clears throat> Any notables or? Uh, I went I went to class with Yerman Broughton. He he did pretty well for himself. And uh, other than that, in my class, you probably wouldn't know them, but there were like really sick snowboarders for sure. Yeah. I I have some other questions too about Norway. Uh, you know, being from the States, it seems like that's where the industry is for snowboarding generally. Uh, do you think it's harder to break on the scene coming out of Norway? Um, I would say so, definitely. I, I, I was lucky that I kind of like got into the the cruise that I did. and uh, I But it is definitely like... If you're not doing contests, like the big shit, then I think it's definitely harder. But now, like, it was harder before, but now everybody's, like, making their own movies and videos and, like, you're on Instagram and all that shit. So it's definitely less hard than it was, but also you got to get in to, like, the good shit, which is often here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, another question, too. You just mentioned, you know, if you don't come up to a contest, Norway's breeding ground for contest freakazoids you you're like an anomaly because you went video part route. Why'd you choose that? Uh, first of all, I wasn't that good at jumping. I went to this school, but so that was like slope style and half pipe shit. Yeah, like blew my knee out, like knocked with this icy shitty jumps. Like this is sketchy, and then you start thinking about that shit. Like oh, that could happen again. I just jump too far next time, and I just uh, started like realizing that I didn't like it that much. But I was also like loving rails in the park and all that shit. And I would watch all the 
all the videos from back in the days, like the resistance, which is back here and true life and all that shit. Like uh, we run, we run that stuff all day. And then just like, dude, I fucking, I want to film some street shit, you know? And, uh, that's kind of where, where we faded into the duction stuff because I, <clears throat> that kind of faded in. Cause I, I met, uh, my homie Martin Ruge, Martin Rouge, big shout. One of my best friends, a genius on the snowboard. He, uh, They'd seen, so they had this crew and this idea with Casper, who we'll talk about also later, like that they were planning this movie, making a snowboard movie, and they'd seen a photo of me on Facebook. Now, I didn't know any of those dudes. And there's a park rail at Folgefauna where I do a switch back lip, which is it's a like cute little photo, you know? And I'm wearing <laughs> Planet Earth pinstripes, and the, the right binding is over the pants. Like this is a 100% Jonas Michelot inspo vibe <laughs> so this is like when keep talking and shit was coming out and like wear it well or whatever like oh this dude this guy's really sick he's loose he's doing his thing you know like talking shit la 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 and it's like this is what i like like just goofing around and jibbing and stuff you know and jump once in a while but i don't want to fucking blast my knee and shit so they they see this photo and i just randomly meet him at a festival and he's like oh yo we saw that photo <laughs> it's like cool and they're like hey do you want to make a snow movie he's like yeah let's go so I would the next following winters I would like I would I would because uh, I moved to this other snowboard school called Tree Seal because it was less serious than the other one it's like kind of serious, uh, and I would just crash at their pad and we would make the duction videos and it was just like, those guys and the humor and like the vibe was just like it was a match made in heaven kind of like because those guys are still like my favorite people and like, they're just the funniest people I know you know, mm -hmm. so it was fun to do like hey these guys like creative stupid snowboarding. And they're funny. Mm -hmm. And then that was off. There we go. Filming. Let's go. That reminds me, the first clip, and which is an induction video, but also in Think Think, I remember like vividly seeing your name on the screen, being like, who's this guy? Was the backflip 50-50. Oh, yeah, really? <clears throat> Did you do a 180 out? No. Backflip 50, yeah. Just back Let's talk about 180 outs later. That's interesting. <laughs> um, the backflip, Yeah. That was in Trondheim, this famous gap to rail that you hit me up about when you were in Oslo oh, yeah. years ago. Yep. And I'm like, sorry, bro, that's a different city. But for Americans, right up the street, seven hour drive. No big, no big deal. <laughs> Cross the road. Let's go. Um, the backflip 50. Yeah, I like to, backflip is like one of my favorite tricks. And we went there and I was like, holy shit, you could backflip this pretty easily. But like, it's pretty, I mean, you can't see the rail as like with any, pretty much any gap rail, which is the intimidating part. So, we tried doing it while there was a bunch of snow in the stairs. Like, there was a lot of snow, which is probably the reason why I was like, okay, I could maybe try it. Because if I slip off, I'm just going to, like, get in, land in the snow. And I, it didn't take me that very long, but it was scary to do, right? I get the 50, oh, we're all happy, and la, la, la. And then it's like, all right, now let's dig out the stairs, <laughs> right? <laughs> which takes, like, two hours, <laughs> you know? So we started digging the stairs out, and now it's like, holy fuck, this is uh, a whole different <laughs> ball oh, game. Oh, cheese, huh? cheese grater <laughs> stairs, all right. <clears throat> Right. Cheese great. Right. 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 Yeah, cheese great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, we're fucking tired from digging, and we see this shit, and it's like, hold, it's like 50 times as sketchy. <laughs> AK, let's just wrap it up. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm not. There's no way. Uh, we might have hit it. Like, I, I might have done some other tricks, like an indie front board, or like, but I, there was no way I was going to backflip it. Well, you mentioned, uh, let's talk tricks. Because I, I said, did you do a 180 out? And you said, we'll talk about that later. What's your thoughts on the 50-50 on the This is a new, out? like, newfound thing that I'm going to try to stick by for myself this winter when I'm filming and shit. And as I, I've seen that lately, there's a lot of 50-50 back 180 outs. And for me, the, the back 180 out doesn't make the trick any harder or cooler. It makes it to be like, oh, you kind of were slipping off. Like, you're not going to spot to be like, I'm going to 50-50 back 180 this rail. You're going to go to 50-50 it. But then sometimes, and I've done this a thousand times, you go, oh, shit, ugh, save it with a back 180. I think it's harder to then not do the back 180. It's, it's going to be harder to, like, not do the back 180 than to do it, mm. than, than the difficulty of doing a back 180 out. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm going to try to, like, not do back 180 out <laughs> of 50s or front 180 out of 50s. My new rule is you can 180 out if you're pressing. And other than that, I'm going to try... Mm. To keep it straight, and, this and I've been we've I've been watching a bunch of videos with Spencer Schubert lately, and we're like, damn, there's a lot of fifty back one eighties. You don't notice it, and I've done it. I'm saying I've done it a bunch, too much. 
So you're saying, Riders are always looking for the perfect 50 50. Something like get away with that's good enough because it's a gnarly spot. Yeah, there's a lot of 50 50s out there. Well, these a lot this, of is, this is, mind you, this is coming from a guy who is trying to smith grind the rail yeah. at dogfight. Exactly. So his, ru- his rule book Why all is, the rules? is rule books no, all over just, the place. I'm not saying it's a, like a serious rule, but like I would like to maybe, what does it look like if I'm not trying to back 180 out? You know? I know what you mean. Because I like the sketchy. That's another thing I like. When you kind of sketch in a landing or whenever, that's when you see what a person's style is. Mm. Like that's when the true style comes out. Like how are you, how are you moving? How does your body look when you're trying to s- s- get yourself out of hitting this post or this fence? Because you can fake style. A lot of not a lot of people that I can think of right now do that. It's very it's easier to s- tell in skating. Like people are like, you know, you're not that chill. Yeah. You know, Over but when me. you sketch, so a lot of times I'll get a trick, and not as not the way I wanted it, but like for some reason I like it because it's like, oh, that was that's why I snowboard. You know, mm-hmm. it's natural. Now, what do you think about the 50-50 strenuous front 180 out? Strenuous, just really going for it. <laughs> that is dope. <laughs> now, that is sick. <laughs> one hundo. You're going to co-sign I'm that one I'm doing more up. of those, actually. So let's just talk trend watch. So are, are Smiths coming back? Did they ever leave? <laughs> <laughs> is it a Smith so, or a Zeech in snowboarding? I mean, what do we got? Zmeech? 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 I don't know. Uh, so, you know, Eric Nesse, a good homie of mine, he did... A video like he was he kept just doing him like he would do him in the streets and like he would do it really good so I'm, it's not like people at the bomb hole for example like dude freddie is so sick of smith like hey i'm not this is not my like my shit but i fuck with it but it's mostly like eric nessie's smith grinds around real let's just fucking i'll throw some homage out there i got some i got some smith grind plans for the streets no back 180 outs, though. Just mm. straight Smith. Dude, Ted Front sent me a Smith, photo. back one, actually kind of gassed. <laughs> Ted sent me a photo of you doing a backside <laughs> bomb drop. That kind of blew me away. Backside oh, yeah. bomb drop to front board? <laughs> yeah. 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 That one's insane. That one? Yeah. It looked People wild in the photo. Uh, just like, what? Never seen anybody just doing a backside bomb drop. That was drop. fucking scary. That was like, I've been looking for that spot the whole season. That was filming for Greenberg. And I uh, found one that was really shitty for that trick, a wood rail. <laughs> But it was oh, the last, deal, yeah. Huh? But it was the last day on a trip to Tromsø. It was like middle of April. Like this is it. Like I was going to the airport after that. So I was up there, like, like breathing. You know, it was windy as fuck. Reed had to hold me. So and, and then he'd run out of the shots. I just wouldn't blow off the roof. Very, very scary. But it worked out fine. It's, it's funny. Some people have been pointing out to me that a lot of like that's some. There's been some peeps jumping backwards off of shit. I haven't really seen it, but that sounds cool. I like that. I hadn't so, seen it, and I saw that. I was like, "Damn!" What's our stance on bomb drops? Yeah, if you're going backwards, whew, so dope. Mm. You know but otherwise, saying? no go. I don't know. Okay, I'd... grab to grinds. Grab to grinds. Grab like gr- grab to rail. I'm like grab and then slide. Yeah, like like when you when you do like an air like to rail, a, like you a, do a grab. Yeah, like a, a melon to back lip or something. Um, I'm down with the gr- grab to rail, melon back lip. All right, we go. Yeah, depends on how you do it. What like, about back one eighty indie to switch fifty? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> he did one of those last year. Yeah, the records. You had a lot of rules out there. Nah. Uh, this is fun. We're getting into the rules and regulations. Trend it's just, it's, it's, unwritten. No, it's unwritten just like, rules. Pre- like, what do you like and don't trick like? snobbery? It's Tricks, fun. Oh, d- d- uh, yeah, snobbery, big time. Yeah. yeah, well, it what is. What about great. the guys that start on a rail without riding in? That's a good question. You know what I mean? What's your what? take on the ride? I don't know about all that. I haven't done them yet, but I'm down. I know there's people hating on it that's saying, like, oh, shit, now it's getting too much. It's equivalent to a bomb drop. It is. You're, you Dude, know what I mean? bomb drops are dope. Like, what's, yeah. Bomb drops are sick. But you've got to either go big or it has to be a sick spot or, like, a different way. Like, it has to just be, like. Like, go big or go home yeah. is what you're saying. Or, like, something different. You showed up. You didn't go big. You had to go home. You had to go yeah, home. Yeah, I went home. <laughs> that, yeah, I did actually go home. And he went home. That's a that reminds me of another rule we had for for a bench press. It's like they're small and everything, but so the trick hasn't it hasn't it doesn't have to be gnarly, doesn't have to be like a hard trick, doesn't have to be like an MBD, but it just has to be genius. Mm-hmm. That was what I told everybody. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Just what do it means. something cool, you know. I don't know. That's such a good. So I love this. This is a really fun conversation for me because your trick nerdery. Is insane. Your your list of obscure NBDs is is second to none. So, my question to you is like, 
how do you come up with this shit? Does, mm. does the spot dictate the trick, or are you a person that shows up and you're like, I have this in my to do list of tricks, and I'm gonna do it? Is it trick di- dictate the spot or spot dictate the trick? Uh, both. Yeah, mostly maybe spot actually, because the spot can show you tricks that you can do that you didn't like even think about, and it might be a trick that's a board slide, right? Like just. I'm not going to ride down a board slide. But I could see a spot that's like, holy shit, that would be sick if you board slide this and your nose went into that thing and then you land on the bush. Like, So it doesn't... It, they go with both hand in hand. I, sometimes I ride tricks down, but that's like more if it's like an actual tech trick, which I feel like I don't really do that much of anymore but or ever. But yeah, kind of both. What about a bomb drop to lip land ride lip slide to smash into a mattress to bounce off the wall? <laughs> So that thing, I used to live in that building. That's why I know that spot. And that is kind of not a spot because you could just go straight into the wall. The funny thing is I was kind of thinking I was going to hit it with no mattress like an idiot. And then I like set up the thing, but there was a mattress there on the street because that corner of the downtown Oslo, like that would be a corner people would just love throw shit away and it would just be gone the next day or whatever but this mattress was like right there i was like oh we'll just try that and the first time i tried it i was like what a fucking idiot to think that i would go i was gonna do this with no mattress like i would die (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it was kind of sketchy because if i didn't hit it properly there was like a wood frame around it like in the nails and shit and i don't know that was fun that spot it was also kind of wanted to hit it because of the drop-in thing it's just like this big green like concrete thing that makes it like oh you're dropping on a thing it's like a little line and that green thing is gone now, so. Can Nobody can one-up right? you. Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, they could front board. I wanted a front board mattress slide. Mattress yeah. bounce. Everyone's looking for a good mattress spot, you know? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever, have you ever heard Dude, Steven's hit story? Me up. Yeah. Steven's actually looks for mattress I mean, spots. I mean, he's he's done a bunch of those, right? He did one, uh, just real quick, I'll, I'll cover it, but he went, uh, he wanted to do the front flip to back roll uh, mm-hmm. one. And he dro- he dragged two mattresses up to Guardsman's Pass. <laughs> and the police, uh, somebody called the police because they thought he was dumping trash. <laughs> so so oh he, had, he had to load the mattresses back up into his car and go up a whole different canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Just driving around with these mattresses. <laughs> That's amazing. I was, I was with him once. We found a couch, and he was so stoked to do like a one-footer bounce off the, oh, yeah. the, cush, the springs on it. Couch mm-hmm. spots are sick, too. Couch gym. Yeah. Not always, you can't find those everywhere, you know? No. Like a couch spot. <laughs> Yeah, like what what makes a clip cause a good clip? Because I feel like there's this intangible thing that we're discussing that not everybody might grasp about flavor, right? Where you're like, ooh, that yeah. gave me that gives me a little feeling. Mm. I don't know why that gives me yeah, a little feeling. Yeah, something about and, it. And you have that little magical fairy dust that's like you watch the clip and you're like, whoo. Thank you. So, I appreciate it. Really so how? Appreciate do, yeah. That. What what makes something? I don't know. It's why do you like anything? You know, people like different movies. People like different music. I like weird shit kind of so we're like coming to salt lake now this is the first time i've been here where there's like some snow in the streets and it's been funny because ted and all these guys have been telling me that uh there's no spots left in salt lake city everything's been done and if you go to one a spot every trick has been done on that spot and that is that shit fires me up i love that because then it's like i want to go to salt lake take me to the plate spots and i'm gonna find some shit that i want that i like doesn't always work out that way, but like often he'll send me a photo of something like this is a spot, <laughs> and I'll like find something behind the spot. Like oh, there's another rail there, or like another la la la. So that's really fun. For me. It's almost like a challenge, you know. You can come somewhere and like try to see if you could. Am I good at finding shit or not? You know. Uh, like I think that's fun. People have been saying that Salt Lake's had no spots for like the past fifteen years. I know there's so much shit here. Yeah. I've, there's too many spots. It's just a time. bad attitude if you think there's no spots. Yeah, guys. <laughs> there's spots. Oh, there's spots. How but the I spots? think the fairy dust you're talking about, though, is there's guys looking for that perfect rail, and it's just like whatever, and then there's guys looking for some genius stuff, as he calls it. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, for example, going back to Greenberg, one of my favorite clips in it that I think about is, like, you front board the rail and, like, uh, you zip up the jet, zip Oh, the and yeah, that's zip uh, up the jacket. Jacket pop. Jacket pop. Oh, wait, which one jacket is that? pop? I'm you confused. zip zip it up, I think, or zip that's it down. Zip up. Yeah. You zip it so up the, on the rail. Yeah, that's the front board zip up. The other one was a jacket pop. I can't remember what that was in. Yeah, that was in, yeah the shoulder jacket. That pop. was 
probably one of my biggest achievements yet because I won from that clip. I won the Change at Tape Lifey Awards. Oh nice. yeah, I forgot Which about is those. A huge deal. I think <clears throat> it was the last one too before I got you know. Vaped. I forgot we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Just you. Change that tape. Change that tape. Got, change that tape. got hacked. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We're gonna take a quick break and talk about DB. What's going on, everyone? Sage Kotzenberg here. This is my new DB collection. We've got the board bag. We've got the duffel bag. They link together so you can hook them up when you're hitting the airport or just traveling in general. It's really nice. And then this bag is made specifically for backcountry riding. It's got a checklist with everything you need in there. Uh, works really well. The material's awesome. We've been using it all the last two years. Check it all out at dbjourney.com. Hope you like it. I'm super stoked on it. Big love. We're going to take a quick break and talk about one of our sponsors, buds. Woodward. I went there on the holidays. The tubing is uh, not just normal tubing. This is like roller coaster tubing. I uh, was with a couple of young kids, a couple of tears the first time, but then they were just screaming to go back up. If you got to go up there with me, dude, it's the most fun you're ever going to have. Sounds like a good time. I heard our pass works our for pass, the tubing I didn't know well. that, dude. Yeah, I'd be going so all good. the time. It's, it's insane. So Woodward Park City is about 15 minutes from Salt Lake. They're open 365 days a year with twilight access for skiing and snowboarding. And this winter, Woodward Park City added 20% more terrain park features, buds. Yeah, they just opened up the full park, and it's, it's killing it right now. Big jumps for uh, guys like you, little jumps for guys like me. Good times for everybody. They also have really good rails for tacoing. So yes. I was there for a short, <laughs> brief. <laughs> you you had a good great taco. taco. And and the taco free twice. taco night over there at the and Woodward. then I got nominated for some taco shit. And I was like, God damn it. Yes, you did. Taco of the year. You go inside, too. I saw kids filming themselves doing parkour. Got to gotta oh, get go on the web and so see what's going on with that. But uh place is incredible. Check it out. So drop in for a session. Any day of the week, Access Woodward Park City is available through daily lift tickets with full day lift access starting at forty dollars. We love to see affordable snowboard tickets, and it's a good place to have fun with your friends. As simple as that. Check out Woodward Park City. All right, we happen to have a guest question from none other than Scott Stevens. Here we go. Oh, hey, it's Freddie. Um, my question to you is: Well, on Jesse's episode, he says that you're his favorite snowboarder, which is a very prestigious uh, place to be because Jesse has seen a lot of snowboarding. And uh, my question to you is, um, who are your favorite snowboarders and influences growing up? Thanks, guys. I'm excited to listen. Good riddance. Heal up. Scott, he sounds sick. He's pretty sick. Oh, yeah, Scott Stevens is my favorite snowboarder, and uh, he's been my idol since, uh, since uh, when I can remember. Actually, let's make a team of my... All-time favorite snowboarders right now. Okay. So pretend I'm making a Frederick's Dream Team Superstar team. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're going to call 100, your team? 100. Yeah. yeah. That would be a good name for a brand. <laughs> good name for the yeah. brand. 100% Superstar team. 100% uh, on the team is Travis Parker. He's probably my f- all-time favorite snowboarder as far as, like, dork and, like, really good snowboarder and likes farting just like I do. He likes so, farting? Is that what yeah. He said. Like nice. farting. Respect, me too. So he's, yeah, his stuff and um, his stuff, <laughs> after Bang and Lame and all that stuff, it's like, yeah, it's gold. Uh, hot second. No, we're not, we're not doing uh, a list. We're just doing a team. Jonas Mishlow. So these two guys are probably like my biggest uh, influencers. Influences. Uh, I got to snowboard again with the Jonas just recently in Minnesota. So it's so fun. Like he's just... It was pretty much his first or second day on hill, and he's just so loose. And yeah, he's he's an amazing snowboarder. Gotta throw Chado on there. Gotta throw Scotty Steves on there. Gotta throw. This is gonna be a big team. A lot of budget. This is a Dude, big budget. Yeah, team. it's the bomb hole budge. <laughs> gotta who? Gotta throw. I mean, Kevin Jones is dope. I liked like his his part in um, in. Uh, Stand and Deliver is also probably one of the ones that I've seen the most. This spin as far as spin we me right round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mm, one's really sick. Me. Yeah. I mean, Luif. I mean, the God, you know. I like watching. Who's the, you're going to run, run out of You're going to run out of budge. Yeah. Quick. No, but they're like, just, out there. they're just down for the cause, you know. Mm. You know, I'm throwing a team. They'll There's going to be a harsh down. reality dropped on you yeah. when you know. I mean, when you look at, start looking at the numbers and the doctor I've signs been, that are going to go out. I've been having harsh reality. <laughs> There's going to be problems <laughs> dropped on me several times. So yeah, that'll be fine. But yeah, those are some uh, those are some snowboarders I really like to watch for show. 
I like that. Good answer. I like that. We haven't actually described to the listeners. I like that. So maybe we could, you could kind of <laughs> preface that so they understand why we're saying that. So uh, after bench press and also during, I, I uh, decided to do a bench event in Oslo called Bench Heaven, where we just like made a bunch of like benchy rails and tried to have some fun prizes and, and stuff. And so the third year, Brandon Reese won God of Bench Heaven and he won this like super nice bench that uh, my friend Paul uh, Brecka, who is like a carpenter uh, product designer, we made he made this insane bench, like welded frame, like one piece oak, laser engraved, a God of Bench Heaven logo. So the idea behind that was, I wanna do awards that aren't just gonna end up in a box in the attic or the basement. You know, this is like something you would keep forever, you know, sit on your porch or the living room. So. Uh, we announced that Brandon won it, and then he comes up, and then I ask him, like, what are you going to do with the bench? And he goes, uh, I'm going to take it home and fuck on it. And then what you're referring to is just me going, I like that, because I <laughs> thought that was sick. <laughs> and then that little bitch didn't even take the bench home. I mean, can, is it a full-size bench? Uh, yeah, it's an actual bench, like furniture bench. That's a, so kind he of a disrespected the bench. Yeah, it's heavy. Like, it's how heavy. are you going to get that home? I mean, how do you get anything anywhere on the planet? Like, you put it on a boat or something, you know? Or a plane. That's a, yeah. Check uh, it. Yeah. So he... Check, you can't check he, a bench. He didn't... Uh, check it apart. Still somewhere, it's still some in some apartment in Oslo. I'm not sure where it is, but he didn't bring it home. So it hasn't been fucked on by him, at least, I don't think. Let's talk about Oslo. I like that. Oslo is like a city built for the streets and jibbing. Oslo is... Natty, natty speed heaven. This shit, man. Just besides snowboarding, it's just the shit. It's expensive. Why? I mean, why is it the shit? I just love, I, I just love the vibe of the city. It's like big, but it's not too big. I mean, the ocean's right there. We're swimming every day. You just bike around. There's a bunch of parks. The party scene is incredible. There's always something happening. Uh, I have untold amounts of friends there. Like, no matter what you want to do, there's to always some, guy. some like kind of crew that's down f- to do whatever you want. Like, you know. And as far as snowboarding comes into the picture, like, you can snowboard. Doing bus and train and subway and whatever, like you just subway to the mountain, and there's not that many cities in the world where you can actually do that. Um, so it's like a metropolitan city hotspot where you could snowboard, you could do street shit. It's fun. There's a lot of people, and it's just yeah, it's it's just yeah, I love it. There's okay. hills. You don't have, have to qu- have speed like I, bungees and stuff. I got a question. King of Oslo, as it mm. pertains to snowboarding, who you got? King of Oslo. Ooh, a lot of, I mean, Mikkel Bang is from Bavim, which is outside of Oslo, but he's kind of like, he's never in Oslo in the wintertime, so I don't want to say him, but he's kind of the king of Oslo, and besides that, and when it comes to like just vibing around and skating and shit, wintertime, that is a tough one. Is there a king? He's always a king. Who's the king of Oslo? I might have to come back to that one. You mentioned mm-hmm. the uh, the All public right, transportation. About- I mm-hmm. went there and I was so stoked and I rode it, used it all the time. And on the last going to the airport, I was like talking to a local. I'm like, this is great, man. This free train system is so cool. And they're like, it's not free. <laughs> it's all, you're supposed to like use some machine yeah. and system? pay. And yeah, you're system. supposed to pay. And apparently you get in big trouble. And I just was riding around like you an get like idiot. A stupid American. dollar fine if you get busted. That's but what I learned. They're out there checking and shit, but like you can get away with it for sure. But Apparently, yeah, I got yeah, away with it I don't week. do that anymore. I, I pay for my shit because I can't be fucked. I didn't know. I had no idea. No, yeah. Another question: Who's the king of Norway? Is it first snowboarding? Who's this, who's like the top dog? Top dog. I mean, steamer. Uh, Are we going steamer. Who's the top dog? You got steamer, Torgir, Stale, Torstein. There's some fucked up names. Yeah, There's Torstein some, is kind of the, some heads. Kind of king. That shred. But like Mikkel Bang though. Is yeah, Mikkel's the, G. the dude. And then they have J.P. Solberg, but he's up there and kind of like rogue up in the mountains. But like, yeah, I got to go Mikkel. He's, Mikkel. Hmm, good answer. He's the fucking shit. All right, buds. I think we should get into a Patreon question. Let's do it. Uh, do you want to talk about Patreon for sure? Second? Yeah, Patreon is basically our crew of people that support us, our listeners. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, some of the cool things that we offer for Patreon members is early access to prints, uh, some Patreon exclusive merch. And one of the cool things is you get to ask a question like this, bud. So we really yes. appreciate you guys that support the show. So thank and you. And good questions a lot of the times, like like this kind of stuff we might never find out about. This is from Sean Lucy. Ooh. <laughs> he says, hey, Freddie, we're older now and enough time has passed 
Did you or did you not pee on the TV? That's a great question from Sean Big Dick Lucy there. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we all know there was no doubt that I actually did it. I admit it. I did it. But <laughs> I'm going to need what, some more context. What the, le- what, the, what the story is, is that we partied hardy in Seattle one night uh, at Aaron Blatt's house where a bunch of these people were staying, like Reese and Desiree and stuff. And uh, I got really drunk and I fell asleep on the couch. Uh, and rumor had it the following day that I had gotten up in the middle of the night and peed all over Aaron's TV, Nintendo, and DVDs. And the way I found out about this is like Jeno picked me up 7 a.m. and we're driving to Park City to do Holy Bolly. And I'm getting text messages from like Desiree and stuff like, yo, Freddie, you peed on the TV. And I'm like, hey, hey, you know, don't think about it because it's obviously a joke, you know. And then I get another te- text message, hey, you peed on the TV. It's like, oh, uh, uh, funny. And then three days later when they roll up to Holy Bolly, they're actually like, yo, no, for real, you peed on the TV. Brandon tried stopping you. You got up in the middle of the night, peed all over the TV, which is right next to the bathroom. So this is probably what I was thinking. And he tried stopping me, and then I just like, eh, and I went back to sleep. Didn't realize that I had done it. I just ran out in the next morning and like jumped in the car. Pretty nice TV? What are we talking? I'm thinking like 40-inch maybe, <laughs> um, plasma maybe. Back then um, they were probably expensive. Was too. it like loaded up so on the wall so you're like just have to, cl- have to, to climb up to pee on this thing? Was or it a full <laughs> erection like over the shoulder <laughs> yeah, style? Yeah, like what or? was going on I mean, on because of the micro penis situation, I would have to <laughs> go tough, pretty huh? close to the TV, I'm assuming. I can't remember it. But <laughs> he peed into the HDMI <laughs> import, <Yeah>. actually. <laughs> And the Nintendo? You had the to go audio, on the Nintendo? The audio plug. <laughs> but so the TV malfunctioned for a while. <laughs> Did I he guess. have to put in a bag of rice or what? A giant bag and of rice? And apparently the Nintendo was kind of fucked and there was like puddles of piss on the DVD covers, oh, which no, is like dude. the spread, the, re- the reach, not so good, but the spread is, <laughs> was amazing. Big spread. So um, I felt really bad when I found out, but then everything dried up and it works. So, and I wonder your, if he still has this TV. What's your nickname? <laughs> All that led to them calling me for at least a year, Freddie Flat Screen. Uh, flat, flat and screen or it wasn't screen just micro peen, it was Freddie. No, it was not just, <laughs> just the screen. micro peen. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it, like, the, it was, you know, when you get a funny nickname, you're like, haha, that, yeah, whatever. But that one, I was like, God damn it, I don't want to be fucking called Flat Screen, you know? <laughs> it only happened once. I've never done that before or after. Well, well nobody's going to have room. you at their house after a night of drinking, too, if you're that guy that's peeing in the corners, yeah. weird corners. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Flat Screen Freddy, I have a question for you. <laughs> um, are you a student of the game? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I heard you've been watching a lot of vids since you've been here. Uh, since I've been here, since December 1st, I have uh, watched a lot of videos, mostly because I've been a lot with snowboarders. Uh, and looking for spots. Mm. So it's been fun. I've also watched a lot of snowboard movies during my life, but not as much the last few years as before, mm. which is kind of the common thing for a lot of people, I think. You've been queuing up like all the Salt Lake video parts, just uh, trying to I see just who's watched spot the you arena. The arena. The arena. Wow, Finger but it's trigger. Not some, hard to turn? It some, was hard some to Some big spots sometimes in there. Sometimes it was hard because it was like a YouTube thing. So the. Parts would just go and onto the next one. I wasn't always sure who I was watching because oh, was everybody was kind of wearing the same kit, jumbled spots, the same spots. But it was it was fun. Jambalaya, was, jambalaya, like Dylan Thompson doing some like psycho shit. Front obviously. blunt, four fifths commit. Yeah, there was, yeah, he there had was a lot like, of four fifths. He had to retire to surfing <laughs> after all those yeah. big big drops. What do you to, think about the front blunt four fifty? Yep, four fifths commit. We just looked at a spot yesterday and I was like, why would you for board side four fifty this when you could just do something cooler? You know what's cooler? I don't know. Something less. Less is more. Smith grind often. Uh, depends. <laughs> I think less is more uh, a lot of the times, but also more four fifty out is crazy, especially at the spot where you're looking at. It. Like I could not even fathom. Like that's I, I think would in never a fucking big think spot. It. It's yeah. dope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A little spot. It's a little wild. Yeah. But the four. So a lot of these like four fifty outs from closeouts. A lot of like the big shit. For me, that gives me like more, more like okay, that was fucking huge. The closeout for me never did it. From like, that's not adding anything to me as watching it. As far as like, that was sick. Uh, yeah, it's gnarly, but you know what I'm saying. Like, doesn't add that much to it. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, closeouts have just always been like, oh shit, no, nah, fuck that. I'm not hitting <laughs> fucking closeout because it's not worth it. You know, you know risk versus reward style. Like trick, the- trick nerd with closeout stuff that I think like I've always kind of thought was important. 
is that if you're going to do a trick on a closeout, you have to be on the inside of the closeout for your trick, right? So like if you're if you're coming up on a on a closeout rail and you're coming into it front side to do like a front side board slide and the, so the closeout would be mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the inside and you do a front blunt 450, you basically have to fall off the outside because to yeah. do it right, you'd actually clip the yeah, yeah, you yeah, clip yeah, the closeout. Yeah. So that would be a good like front side lip slide 270 or something yeah. where you're like your tails on the inside or, you know, like a switch no slide pretzel, like, you, you know, but I, I always hated the closeout tricks where you fall off on the outside. Mm. Those are illegal to me. I've just been put too much of a pussy really to try those. <laughs> Because they're scary. Because you're going to clip. I'm going to clip. When a dude has the right control, they're like almost dip <clears throat> in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you dip That's it in. That's like, what you want to see. Well, it's like, yeah. damn. Like, like a front board where you dip your tail below yeah. and then nose And then pop. you're popping and it's as legit as it can get. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. Closeouts the close are just out. not in fashion anymore, huh? I like closeouts. Because, you know, if you try something, I'll go to a big closeout of a parking garage. Back in my, I'm a fucking office talk. Let's not get carried <laughs> away here. But back in the day, uh, you know... It might only take five tries. Or you're like, whew, this first one's going to be scary. But, like, when you get a photo, it's going to be easy. <laughs> and is it easy? It, it yeah. is easy. Yeah, it's easy. If that's your thing. And then and then if I look at you guys and you're like, you know, some of the technical, like, mini shred stuff, I'm like, that must have taken fucking 100 tries. Some of it might. You can't hit a giant closeout also, 100 like, times. If, if the closeout takes more than five tries, you're going to start, like, I don't know. I lose focus and shit, and that's when you fuck up, I guess. So you don't want to be sessioning it, for sure. Like, gnarly spots, you don't want to. You can only hit it so many it. times, yeah. your body. Yeah. All right, well, we're talking trick nerds. I think it's time for uh, You Know What, Buds. Name that video part. Name that video part. Uh-oh. Name that video part is presented by Mammoth. I don't know if you saw recently, uh, they put Stony Buds' mini pipe. They put some signs up. Shout out to it's Gabe Taylor. Beautiful, beautiful looking sign and pipe. I don't know if you've uh, seen that giant rail over there. I heard old Diesel might have handled it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot oh, yeah, about that. I did. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, did I do that? 126, 128. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Stevens it. Stevens was actually talking about the session to me on the phone, and he's like, it was such a, such a wonderful moment seeing Chris do that. He was so excited for you. You know, uh, that was uh, that was good. That was big for me. You know, I don't do that many tricks. It's like I, I was, achievement. I'll tell you, I was, I was flying a little too close to the sun after that, Buds. So I needed yeah. to get taken down a couple a little pegs. Little cocky was a little cocky I was feeling real hey, good. I was on a clip. Shout out. Yes, yeah, Steven said you were dancing. <laughs> you kiss, kiss your pinky ring. That was great. Was Steven great said you were dancing see. around after, just, just yeah, talking we were, all lit up. We were Dude, what's good. sick? Uh, uh, when Mammoth putting in a rail like that, that's pretty legit. Like for everyone to handle, that's. Yeah, that park uh, is so fun to ride because you get a million laps. I think it's two minutes to the top of Main Park. Mm. And I got to cruise around with Gabe Taylor, and he gave me a. He was my chaperone, and we went. Hiked around, whacked pow turns, jumped off cliffs, ripped corduroy. Which, as I'm getting older, I I, I unfortunately dope. like. I don't want to like it, but I like it. It's a good place for that. So, anyway, huge shout out to Mammoth. They rule. If you're thinking about having a good time and want to plan a little snowboard vacay, head on over to Mammoth. Dude, I just look at Andrew Miller's Instagram and I'm like, I gotta go there. What's up? Oh, dude, I'm gonna name drop right now. Uh, me and JP, there's a 32 shoot we were doing a while ago, and we were on top of a ridge with uh, Jeremy Jones' Big Mountain. And we were like, what in the hell? How do we end up here? And we were like <laughs> riding rowdy terra uh, terrain off of the chairlift. You can get rowdy. Get rowdy. There. Yeah, you can get you, rowdy. You, you and who were with him? Me and J.P. Walker. So you're name dropping name. a couple names. Yeah, there. we're <laughs> dropping. So I, I got to pick Woo! that up. I just dropped <laughs> okay, a couple yeah. heavy names. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So See, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Let's get her to name that video part. Shout out to Mammoth. You guys rule. Let's fucking damn that. <laughs> All right, so uh, you know, I was told that you're you're kind of a nerd, and you, you know the parts. So we're doing four, I think. We're gonna do I love four. that we're doing more. Are you than doing one. a lightning sometimes round? Sometimes these things just fly lightning. by, and you know, lightning round. More. You know, I might have gone too fucking easy, but uh, we'll, we'll start it off with a fucking meatball. Here we go. Big load. The hurdy gurdy, the hurdy gurdy man. The hurdy gurdy is an amazing part. Back to that, that was a serious yeah. meatball. He actually had that clip, and uh, why don't you go jerk off to some snowboard videos? Uh, me, which we will talk about later. Um, skip to my Lou, huh? Classic skip to my Lou video part segment. Right here. <sighs> All right, uh, I got another meatball. I think I went too easy. Here we go. 
Ted Anderson, get real. That's correct. This is making me more nervous than I thought because my confidence level inside is pretending to be 10 out of 10, but this is really hard. Like, you got yeah. two. You, yeah, got, you two. got two. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. You got two. Okay. You're, you're helping me out here. Here we go. Oh. Um, Change that tape. Which one is it, though? Is that Scotty? Yeah. Is it? Thanks, Brain. Yes, it is. Wow, three for three. Wow. All right, he's Impressive. doing pretty good. Impressive. This is we got the last one. Let's see how he does. Timeless video part. I don't know. I'm just not sure he's gonna Chris, get this uh, one, but I hope. Here, get real. I would the hardest one. <laughs> I would no, love to see him just get start. stumped. Yeah, we'll see how he does. Here we go. Focus, Freddie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I have that one. I can run it up again. Do you need it again? Sure. Just for fun. <laughs> I'm blanking. Give, give some hints. I'm just going to let you know there's people driving in their car right now screaming the name hey, of that that's video fine. part because they that's know what fine. it is. Yeah. Um, okay. It's it's a kid's no video. It's the first one. Oh. So that that yeah. would, that would that's, be... It's a minute. It's a minute. Uh, I was on the Burning Bridges tip and... Uh, the first one, I was like, it wasn't, I didn't own it, mm. you know? I should have asked your age before. I knew that one no, was maybe out your wheels. No, 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 don't do that. No, no. Um, you just <laughs> you just have to tell me, so I don't have to, like, run through the... It's uh, The Ender. It's Justin Hebel. Justin Hebel. Oh, it's Justin such a Hebel. good part. I'm actually I a little... Justin I don't Hebel. want to say I'm disappointed. I mean, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed. I think everyone's disappointed. <laughs> That's what I like about. Um, <laughs> you got three out of four, seventy-five yeah, percent. I mean, you want so the, you only you had the, to get one. You, you really only wow. had to get one to win. We this got is a nice. for the listeners. It's a it's a Yeti carry-all filled with bombhole merch, uh, all available at bombhole.com. We got a maroon hoodie. Oh, uh, we got some hats. We got some stickers. This is we, nice. Keychains, smelling salts. Holy shit! Yeah. You can put all your items in there. You can put your bungee in there if you want. Mm -hmm. I could put my bungee in That's there. That's a good bungee storage unit. Dude, this thing is amazing. Thank you. Bungees are getting hard wow. to come by, man. I was trying to find one oh. for Scotty Steve's. I had to call like four I'm swimming people. in bungees. Oh, you are? I'm swimming in bungees. I don't know why I didn't call you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm literally up to my neck in bungees. I thought bungee maybe bag. you were like retired. I figured you like sold all your bungees because no, no. you're like, we still you don't want to go out bungeeing. Uh, okay. Well, I'm kind of a gym nerd, you know, so I kind of Kids like that. Swimming. You just go out and bungee you know, we, for we fun. You pull bunch. I have pull bunch for fun. We haven't asked. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you, how much can you bench press? Because oh, we've yeah. been talking about bench press. That's a good question. Jenna wanted us to do a bench press battle, but then I was like, dude, we're going to get injured, by both of us. Uh, not, I'd not probably, I, I will, actually, I'm actually, I will literally just bench you under the table. <laughs> you, you, you probably will. Because I actually know how much I can bench. He has diesel you, attached to his name. <laughs> the th other thing is... This wrist right now is kind of fractured, and this wrist has just been a bitch already, from digging. So Already making excuses. Sorry. We could uh, do a cock push-up. Cock push-ups? Sure. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. Yeah. But, hey. So but do you know, but have you ever tried to do you a max, do max bench? Not max bench, but I'm probably, like, what are we talking, kilos? or I don't, know what, I don't even know I don't what a kilo even, yeah, is. I don't know what that yeah, is. We yeah, do pounds I've never, like, States. been... Uh, I uh, spent a lot of time in the gym fixing this fucked up body, like hips and knees and ankles and shit, but I've never been big on the bench press. Maybe that's probably your problem. Never really cared for it that much. <laughs> Maybe it's the it is. ultimate bro. Straight up don't care about it. <laughs> Maybe it is. It's the most hey, bro. Can you bench, the most bro, bro yeah. <laughs> thing you could do at the gym <laughs> yeah. is bench. Oh, yeah. It's oh, sick. Yeah. Some, you gotta, it's sick. You got to channel that inner bro and just love it sometimes. All right. We need the uh, next video part. Oh, yeah. Name that video part part two for the listeners. Uh, if you know the song, comment on Instagram, on the Bombholes Instagram, on the photo of Freddie Perry. That's where we pick. First person to comment the right name that video part. Gets what, buds? Prize pack. Okay, here we go. Okay. Mm. Freddie, you might, you might know that. Do you not? Uh, yeah, well, let's beep that out so they don't know. Yeah, yeah, they beep. Okay. Uh, I, was, I was assuming you were beeping. Thank you for. Or you playing. could just put a like that on that. So it's yeah, like... I like that. <laughs> I have a question. That's on. Do you do you have a favorite video part, like an opus that like uh, not of yours but of like the 
It's usually I say Travis Parker lame. 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 Yeah. You like lame. I like yeah. Uh, I like that one. Parker after bang. Hmm. I like after bang better. Yeah. But like as far as like feel good vibes, that mm. one is is the one for it me is. for his the song is so there's, good. Yeah, the tear for the fear. Talking, yeah. There's a lot of good parts out there, so it's hard. But, but I think I think that's a good, yeah. respectable answer. Should we hit another smeller before we just get us through? We're we're, yeah. we're getting into it here. We're get us through. Get, you know, get us through. Oh, put me through a, the misery. I need know? a smeller. Like, yeah, here I'll just you start this one off. Hand it. Oh, you, can, it I'll, you start them. Oh. <coughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Wow! Oh shit! Yep. Uh, we do Where's have pepper Run through wall smelling salts and uh, run through walls oh mace god, as well. <laughs> available at bombhole.com. Yeah. We also oh. have uh, like those uh, tasers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> run away from the cops. Yeah. Tasers. Bombhole tasers. <laughs> bombhole tasers. <laughs> we should look into that, bud. Maybe get a That's couple. Just we should, should get like a little electrocuted. Is there like an electrocution thing on the? The wheel there, I think know. we, I think in, I you almost get tasers in Alibaba. Did, or what? Didn't we do back <laughs> in the day with Zach Hale, one of our early episodes, mm. like first five? We when he got named that video part wrong, I think dog we, collar. we dog collared him. Ooh, which isn't that bad. We should start doing that again. Yep. Taser, yeah. a real taser though. If you lose, it'd be tight. So yeah, that's so good. Like, I got a good line right here. Yeah, if yeah, they yeah, get it wrong, <laughs> oh my god! Oh, were they, the one that shoots in? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking shoots. the ones that you just no, I'm touch them with. About the one across the room <laughs> that shoots. Like I could probably get, I could probably get Julian from here, dude. <laughs> you know, what, you know what might be better than a, than a taser, buds? If you get it wrong and name that video part, is a tranquilizer dart to the neck. <laughs> a oh. blow dart. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We gotta start looking into what hey, we can do. I forgot a thing about talking about parts and stuff. I had this little guy, which is uh, one of the last bench press uh, stickers oh, ever wow. of Casper Hegstrom, uh, my best friend, who's also tattooed on my arm right here. That we should put somewhere if you want it. Those uh, are similar. It's the Yosh Yosh. Yeah, they're inspo. similar to the Yosh. It's one hundred Yosh inspo stickers. Yeah. I swear, That's Yosh is around here somewhere. He's got yeah. There's He's, a lot of this he was. Around. I don't know. T Bird's over there. Yosh was around here. We'll have to get Yosh yeah. up in here. T Bird and uh, Danny's Bonaduce yeah, look alike. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, uh, let's keep things moving here. Keep it moving. I think we should get into a little thing we like to call spite boarding. <sighs> you know, do you want to maybe describe spite boarding and uh, what it is? My interpretation of spite boarding is kind of like, for me, it was uh, if you have some built up. Fucking feelings or aggression or like something that you want to like get rid of or like I'm gonna show this be- this person or these people or myself la 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 that I can do this or I can do better la- and then go snowboarding and like get kind of gnarly with it just to like just because kind of almost you know and I mm. was doing a lot of spike boarding this season I filmed Greenberg part. Because the fall, the year before that, I got out of a relationship that kind of fucked me pretty bad. And this is a pretty gnarly story, so maybe we don't have to like talk details and shit. But there was a person that uh, decided to cheat on me three days after my ankle surgery, which was two days after my dad being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So there was a lot of sandbags on my shoulders. This is like May. And then after this person did this to me, uh, this person tried to not live anymore in front of me, uh, which I had to then stop. And then that also happened twice more the same day, different scenarios, as I'm running around on my casted ankle foot while my dad is like, all this shit going on. So it's like lightning bolt situations from left and right, also trying to like deal with uh, a fucked relationship situation, but also trying to save a person's life. And this was just like, how the fuck am I supposed to deal with this shit? Like, so I'm going through the summer, literally crying myself to sleep for like eight weeks straight up, thinking that, oh, uh, somebody cheats on you. It's over. Like, right. Rule number one, right? But then it happens. And then you're like, hey, but I love this person. And this person regretted it to the point where this person did not want to live anymore. Like, that is the, it's pretty fucking intense. So then I'm in my head, like, injured depressed, sad, trying to figure out, like, what am I going to do? Like, forgive, forget, forgive, forget, la, la, la. So 
A month and a half later, I take my da- a sick dad to France because we'd been talking about watching the Tour de France for 20 years. We'd gone on a road trip. It's the most amazing time. Uh, fucking love love my dad. He's my hero. He's like a fucking champion. Shout out to this guy. Give him this, let's give him the super air horn. Oh, yeah. He's the man. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck, yeah. And then we get back from this trip, which was fucking dope. We're, like, camping in my element. We're driving up Alpe d'Huez, and we're watching the Tour de France. Like, we're living the dream. And then I come back, and I'm like, you know what? I have to end it with this person because this is not... I'm going to hold it against this person, and, like, you know, it's just going to be a shit show. What happens next time something gnarly happens? Like, this is crazy. Like, what if we have kids? And like, la, la, la. And then when I, when I'm, I, do, I end it, I realize that, oh, she cheated on me again while I was gone with my dad in... France. So it's just like, it was just getting comedic almost, like the levels of shit what I, that I was dealing with. So snowboarding was not on my mind at all. Like, I didn't give a fuck about that shit. But then winter comes around and I'm like, getting this opportunity to film with Scott for Greenberg, which is like a blessing from you know, somewhere. And uh, I start filming, but I'm still fucked up inside, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like frustrated. Why did this happen to me? You start getting bitter about like, uh, recognition, uh, sponsorship support, like people saying stuff to you, but it's not being delivered, empty words. And there's just a lot of negative shit all over, you know? And my ankle was like, so I've had a lot of gnarly injuries and like knee surgery, and this and that, but the ankle was like fucking me hard. Like my mobility and my left ankle is non-existent. And if I just slightly tweak it, it feels like somebody's like almost jamming a pencil in there, you know? It's very hard to like... I've been to 20 doctors and they can't figure it out. They're kind of like, hey, we don't have all the answers, you know? Which is tough to hear because I'm like limping to the bathroom every morning, you know? So this is all happening while I'm filming Greenberg and I'm taping my ankle every day, snowboarding, to the point where I was like, (laughs) mid-season I'm pulling off tape and I'm like ripping skin off, like I'm bleeding because the skin is not loving it, you know? It's not, you're not supposed to be doing that for this long. Also, every session would hurt, you know? I'm like, once I couldn't really land switch, like, cause I was, then I would bend my left knee, which would then bend my ankle. And it was just like a shit show. So every session was kind of fucking painful, just fucking physically and mentally. But I still like w- wanted to save this opportunity to film for like one of my all time favorite heroes and a lovely person and like be involved with all you guys to do this project, you know? So I, the belief in trying to get something cool for that was like trumping all of it plus like, like, fuck this shit, you know? I'm going to fucking show these guys. Who, who are these guys? I don't know. Maybe just fiction of my imagination. But, like, this person, I was just like, all right, you're never going to see my face again. You're never going to see me again. Like, you're never going to talk to me. Like, you're out of my life. It was, you just made it really easy when you did this thing again. And, uh, yeah, that was, ended up filming, which is my favorite, or like, my best video part, I think, as far as, like, creativity and spots and tricks that I'm really hyped on and, Especially, I'm very proud of myself for doing that when <coughs> I was going through all that shit. Because that was like, I don't know how I did that, really, to be honest. It's like kind of a blur, you know? Spiteboarding. <laughs> That's some next level spiteboarding. I love yeah. that. I love that. And I, I would just also add, like, who knows if we cut that shit out because that's well, that was, heavy and personal. Good, and It's kind of good stuff. For life, it's almost like it. not my position to talk about this on the perspective from this other person, but I would just then ask people to not try to figure out who this was or like just let it be, you know? This is just for this room and whoever listens, and yeah, that's all I would like to say about that, you know? Well, thank you for sharing that, and uh, I think that it is inspiring to take hardships and turn them into fuel. That's... that's uh, pretty special to, to see how that worked out and can be inspiring. And, and, you know, if you think about music and anything creative, like the best stuff seems to spawn from turmoil and yeah. look at your Greenberg part. You got Ender. It's fucking awesome. It also, when it it's rains, it pours oh, and dude. that's just life, you know, and you handled it and got your part you wanted and yeah, everyone's also got to add, I had it. a lot of fun doing it Mm -hmm. like i'm i love being out there and just fucking talk shit and look for spots and like bug my friends you know Uh, also i have to add that that shit would not be possible without martin strom my very good friend who filmed that uh for pretty much no money 
I had to argue with my sponsor to just get him a little bit, like ridiculously low symbolic amount. But yeah, like my friends, they uh, they pull up, and I really appreciate it. Shout out to my when you needed yeah. it too, huh? Oh yeah, big time. So you use you use snowboarding as an outlet. I mean, it was already there, but it was just like, who knows what I would be doing if I wasn't, you know? I don't know. And while we're talking about it, it's also, I kind of went through a sh another shitty year while I was filming prequel uh, because I was having more troubles with like sponsors loving to tell me that I'm their favorite snowboarder and I'm this and that and, oh, we see a lot of this in you. Let's do this. And then nothing happens. And when I ask, oh, maybe, because I've been chronically undervaluing myself. I remember making bench press. Like, I finished the whole thing just because I wanted to. So I usually work, like, six, seven, eight months a year just to, like, say what did not work and, like, make my own shit. And I remember, like, hitting up Burtner. Hey, uh, this is the movie. Like, it's finished, right? Do you want to sponsor it, Bent Metal? And I was like, uh, would you like to sponsor it for $500? <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, that's, that's one month of rent. And I was all right. That's what I'm thinking. He goes... Uh, you could have a thousand. <laughs> Would you like? I, I was love, like, whoa, I love really? When people do that, right? Really? Yeah, I was like, oh, was sick. And it's still like, looking back, I could have gotten way more. You know what I'm saying? Like, Five just like not even thinking about like the financial like <clears throat> stuff that you could get from anything, pretty much. That's something that's interesting to talk about because I see in our little circle of Salt Lake in snowboarding in general, there's there's a lot of like, you know, like nobody's calling me to do anything like my, my phone hasn't been ringing to like make to be a part of something and and you are a sponsor's dream because you're self-sufficient you're like i'm gonna go make my own video mm. with my friends and i'm just gonna do it on my own i don't need, I need like very minimal help and so uh i don't know i mean when i look at things like that i, I feel like especially like you know the stuff with the skits and how you're such a personality i mean that's worth a three-year fatty docu sign, you know. Yes, Fucking it send is. it across the table, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, thank you for that. I mean, it's always I've never done a video project that I didn't want to do. Like I've always just it's it's happened because I want to do it, and often I just film, and then while I'm filming, I'll figure out what it is. Sponsors don't want that. They want what are you gonna do? It's like I don't know what I'm gonna do yet because I want it to be something that I want to do, and it's got to come like organically and like an idea that I like or something stupid. They want to see the deck. <clears throat> you got to get budged, and they have to get budged from other people. Dude, so I you made, gotta so the, you gotta start making fake decks. I've made some pretty sick decks. I'll tell you about a deck. Let's, let's talk deck. Kind of like a little micro deck that I've been. <laughs> yeah, you've been making micro decks. Out there. <laughs> Small deck. So the prequel <laughs> video I got part. Anaconda decks out there. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> The prequel video a tuna part. can deck, actually. <laughs> you know where I'm like, uh, so there's the I'm doing the video and this guy is like watching me. You know the surveillance and there's a person who's watching my whole career. Like, who is this guy? He's the chosen one. So prequel, that idea was supposed to be a welcome to the team idea that I pitched to like a few brands. But my biggest pitch was to the brand Fred Perry. You know the fashion <laughs> yes, brand. Yes. Wow. So because like Louis Vuitton was doing shit and skating and like like all these like kind of high end fashion stuff is trying to do cool shit. So I made this deck where it's like the storyline. Okay, this is, uh, okay, all these brands are doing this. All these brands are doing this. The time is now. Like you could get into being involved with extreme sports. That's it's the coolest it's probably ever going to be right now. Uh, and there's a story. You follow this Frederick Perry and we follow this person who's like, hmm, who, is this guy going to be what we need for the marketing team? No, no, no. And we see like some photos from my clips this season. And then you see me get a phone call, which I do in the video. And I fly to London. I show up in front of the headquarters. So I had the headquarters of Fred Perry in, in the thing. And I walk into the room. And the guy that's been watching me the whole time turns around. And it's me. And I'm like meeting myself. And it goes, welcome to the team. Welcome to Fred Perry. Fred Perry. And they sent this this pitch to like the Norwegian distributor. And, I, and they said they sent it to the fucking main quarters at London. But they probably didn't, you know. I was like, damn, that's that was a. I was a uh, really proud of that one, but that's, nothing. It's pretty dope, dude. Buds, if you haven't seen prequel, it's all filmed like uh, security cam footage. That sounds. Then it's got like the security cam cam grain on it, and it's like up in the corner of a building, and it's you. It's a it's a great concept on that. So cool. that was also supposed to be a prequel to a larger project called The Man, which I was trying to pitch to people and like sponsors and stuff, but I was like. 
to make it the way I would want to make it, I would have to like actually have some money, like a lot of money. Because I would want to do like expo- it would be like kind of an action thriller comedy snore movie. <laughs> but like for real. Amazing, man. And I, I mean... want it to be at, like to get like the production value was suppo- supposed to be kind of the humor in it. But I was just not getting anywhere close. So I just had to scratch it. So the prequel is just a prequel to whatever, like the rest of my career, I guess. But that was also filmed during a lot of stress. Like I was finishing up my bachelor. I, I was doing school. Uh, what did you get your bachelor's in? Uh, art direction. Just finished it this uh, last summer. Wow, it's fucking New Year's. Jesus Christ. 2023, so here we go. Um, bachelor's de- degree, work, editing stuff, uh, love life shit. And then another round of like a sponsor that was like saying shit but didn't deliver. So I was like kind of getting over it. But I still filmed the prequel, thanks to Martin Strom again. And we made something that I'm really proud of because it, it was a lot of work. And it was like, we were like... The, our squad was like, this is fun. You know, we're, we're having a good time making this. And uh, then another round of fucking uh, heartbreak. That shit sucks, man. That shit is the worst. And that shit followed me through whole 2022. And I had a broken rib in my back, which took me out for two months. It was just like a shit show, snowboarding-wise. So that was like a, a month of like, now we need to make this thing ASAP. Because we have a month of snow and also I'm healthy-ish. Let's go. So we also got that done. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. But yeah. You got any love life advice? He's done some <laughs> Dude, heartbreak. You, you can't you? fight it. I mean, you got to, It's what do they say? It's better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all. Mm. You got to get and go through it. It's just <clears throat> life, man. Eventually yeah. you'll find the one. I feel like you're a person that loves big too. Mm-hmm. And I love pretty hard too, if you know what I'm saying. Now we do. But like, it, it's. To fu- if you fully open your heart and and then it gets broken, it's it's a Dude, lot. I'm such a hopeless romantic, and yeah. it's it, good, I guess. The but person's it's also out sucks. there, though. It's gonna happen. It's just when you yeah. know, and don't settle. You know, no. find find the oh, best yeah. friend, find the, the best, find the love of your life. Don't settle because that it'll be worth it. Thanks. Guys. And then you'll look back and be like, ah, whatever. It is what it is. Now I'm with this person that's dope. Mm-hmm. Preach. For rage. <laughs> How about your ankle, dude? That thing ever heal up? Because I got a lifelong ankle dude, issue, too. I went to the, tough. like, Olympic doctors, like, doing the national snowboarding team and all those, uh, like, alpine guys. And I walked in there, and I have a good friend of mine who works there, Lars. He, he's helped me a bunch. But these other doctors are kind of like, oh, you're on the national team? Like, no. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Uh, do you do this for a living? Like, ki- no, not kind of. Oh, okay, interesting. Like, they were, like, kind of not taking it seriously. Like, these guys are not thinking about my ankle when they go to sleep at night. But if I was, like, some Olympic guy, I would feel like they would maybe. I don't know. Then at the end of the day, they go, like, hey, we don't have all the answers, and this ankle, we don't know what's up with it. Like, it, it's, it hurts to touch it, but the photos show that it's fine. They've gone in twice, twice surgery. They remove what they can of sketchy shit, and then nothing happens. So I don't know. We've tried it all, and now it's kind of like I'm just accepting that it's going to be painful. Which is probably gonna suck way more in twenty years than it is now. But right, like, what am I supposed to do with it? I do. I train a lot, like, of PE shit and you ride stiff boots. Stiff as fuck. Re- actually, I hate what uh, riding stiff boots. So that's one thing that kind of changed my riding. I'm like ra- uh, landing with my back way more than I used to because of the boot sitch and my ankle sitch. Well, I got a question from uh, none other than Ted Borland. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Chris Stone, Frederick? Ted Borland here with a question for Freddie. Freddie, you always seem to have some sort of injury going, yet you also like to choose sketchy spots where you might not notice how dangerous it is until the slightest wrong turn can get you. Do you crave the legitimizer? And also, how have injuries affected your snowboard career? Ted Borland, huh? Got to say, Ted Borland. Air horn. There you go. Ted Borland, one of the most underrated writers out there ever, straight up. That guy has done some incredible things, and he's also just a silly little goofball. Mm. Dude, Dude legitimize the guy that goes like fucking knob rails, which is like, I don't touch that stuff. Fuck that shit. Dude, I don't crave legitimizers. They just happen, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> shit is sketchy sometimes, and like often... It's I, I'm not choosing spots that are gnarly on purpose. It's just like, oh, there's, I mean, bike racks are like sketchy, but 
it's leading into another thing. It's, oh, see, bike rack, I'm going to try like try it. But that's also a thing I've stopped doing because I, in the prequel part, I like almost landed on my neck in one of those things and it's like, all right, I'm done. So now I'm trying to snowboard smarter than I ever have. Like I'm not doing cheese stairs. Why? I'm not doing closeouts. I'm not doing bike racks. Knob rails, fuck that. And, oh, it's getting dark. We have one hour light and oh, we didn't, we haven't started setting the spot up yet. Now nah, I'm good. I'll wait for another time, you know? I've had too many injuries, too many hours fucking healing after surgery. So I'm like... <clears throat> time has to be right spot has to be dope i'm I'm thinking dope to fucking risk ratio it has to be on point you just the, the other day like oh the clip was looking slow and boring but it was gnarly fuck that let's not do it like i'm trying to do fun stuff i'm not trying to like just fucking scare the shit out of myself which i also have but yeah i don't know kind of forgot what he asked me but well he said something about injuries too that i think that's good for our listeners any advice for somebody that just got broke off and they're going to be laid out on the couch Oof. for four months so I just had hip surgery last. That was also a thing that happened twenty. That was twenty twenty one. I had hip surgery. I was kind of excited for it because like I have I had a lot of hip pain my whole life, which I thought stemmed from soccer, but it was mechanical, I guess. So I'd been walking around years and years stretching, trying everything like this and that and this and that. It was getting kind of depressing, and then we find find out it's actually the bone that was wrong. So my hip. So it's called acetabular impingement. So my thigh bone knuckle isn't fitting. Wasn't fitting in the hip joint perfectly. So I was like tearing fucking cartilage out and it was getting squished when I was moving both hips and it, it explained so much so I stopped like trying to stretch because I was just annoying the pain so then they could go in shave off the bone like they literally pull out the fucking hip thing uh shave the bone sew it up and I was like all right good I'm I'm, I'm excited for this because this is causing me a lot of pain and, and fucking stress so <laughs> and the, but the catch with hip surgery was you have to lay on your back for four weeks which sounds pretty heavy, but I was like, fuck yeah, I can edit, I got schoolwork to do, watch movies, fucking whatever, let's go. And I lay on my couch, and like after three hours, my back was starting to get fucked. Like <laughs> I was like, hours? <laughs> back pain, like serious, like help me move, I'm getting like fucked. Didn't even think about that. Like hip pain was fine, because I was, you know, I was prepared for it, but then there's this whole other thing. So you can, I sometimes am looking forward to like, just okay, we're gonna fix this knee thing, it's gonna suck. But I was also very excited, like, so my three knee surgeries, I would go, I go like this, you know, I'm not drinking, I'm not doing anything, I'm like straight trying to fix my shit, because my motivation is I want to snowboard without pain, right, which is the only way to do it. I have a lot of friends that have been saying that they go to the gym, they've been saying that they ride the bike, but they haven't, and they pop their shit again, they pop their shit again, they pop their shit again. So if there's anybody out there that's injured, I'm telling you, like, straight up, you just got to go 120% focus on this thing. Also, obviously, find other shit. If you have a girlfriend that likes to spoon you, great. If you don't, hang out with your boys, play some FIFA, and try to, like, do everything as right as you can. You're not going to be doing it 100% right the whole time, but like, you have to fucking try. Get on the bike. Go to the gym, try to eat healthy, I guess, which I'm bad at, but that's pretty much it. Uh, another part of Ted's question, he said, uh, do you crave the legitimizer? Why don't you explain what a legitimizer is to our listeners, too? <laughs> uh, a legitimizer is if you do a trick on a spot or anywhere and you eat shit and it shows that the spot it, it, it shows that the spot is actually gnarly, like it wasn't easy. Because some tricks would be like, oh, that was easy, whatever, move on. But then sometimes you see people slamming on these same spots and it's like, holy shit, I didn't even think of that. That's gnarly. Like, holy shit. More often, more often than not, uh, you get the trick and then you try to do it better and then you eat shit. But then they use it as a slam and it pretends that you went back up and got it. But that also happens sometimes. Yeah. Good shit. I love it. Um, I think we should talk into some nerdy nerdy trick talk. Uh, some, some of my favorite notable clips from yourself. Uh, I want to start with, from Greenberg, it's the ender of the movie. You 50-50 and then ride across a ton of trash cans, and then you 50-50, like the bottom rail. There's, mm. You know, you, you bridge the rails with like fucking 50 trash cans. Uh, I want to hear the story behind that clip. Uh, so that's a trick I've thought about for a long time. This zone is the Toyin Park. It's kind of like the rail gardens in Oslo. There's a bunch of sh different stuff you can do and. It always gets played, but then every time like you find new shit to do. So we in Oslo, we have these like green, kind of perfect round trash cans. 
and I'd always wanted to like link them together, but it's pretty far, you know? So the one time I did try to get it done, I was like out for three hours walking all across fucking Oslo to find these fucking trash cans in the middle of the night, like stealing them, loaning them pretty much, like trying to like not have people bust me stealing these guys. And I would hide them behind the house. There's like a tiny little house right next to it. And then the next morning, like run out, put them, put them all there. Uh, that time I tried it the, f- the first time, didn't get it because it was snowing. And I'm like literally the worst snowboard on the planet when it comes to like light ra- rain drizzle or even snowing. I'm like, mm, I'm such a little bitch, you know? And I was like, I'm not going to put my goggles on and like, it was rail riding with goggles is sketchy, you know? I you, It limits your eyesight and all that shit. But I tried, couldn't get it. And then I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Put all these fucking trash cans back? So I just hid them behind the house again. And they stood there for like, I would say almost two weeks before <laughs> I got somebody else to come film me. Because that's a hard thing in Oslo. There's Martin Strom, that's pretty much it. Who can? So I just, one of my skate homies come and just hold the fucking can. <laughs> like, can you please just try to keep this shit steady? And I went back one day, it was sunny, and then it, it got, I got it pretty quick. But these poor people's trash cans are up for two weeks. I mean, they're public ones, but I guess. Oh, they're public. And when I put them back, there was a bunch of snow in the trash, but hey, it still melts. I don't know. Yeah. So that clip's unbelievable. Love it. Thank the you. other the other one I love from that part is the back 180 onto the C rail, mm. like the wrong way C rail, I guess almost. Mm. That's in the same park, basically, or across the street, right? You walk there. Same park, there. pretty yeah. much, yeah. That's like a legendary Oslo spot mm-hmm. that a lot of people have been h- hitting. And I, I'd i been thinking about that trick for like five years, but the time never lined up with there was a, enough snow. Because we get snow, but it's very like random because it's a coastal city, so it, it'll be gone the next day all, all of a sudden. And this spot, you need a lot of snow because there's, there's like a ledge at the bottom that you want to be like covered up. So... Uh, fridge wanted to come hit it with me and i was like yeah let's let's go dig it out tonight like the night before and he goes oh why oh because i don't want to spend three hours digging the stairs draining all my energy before i'm trying like the scariest trick i've ever tried you know i want to be focused and like ready for this shit so we go there we dig it out pimp it all nice you can look at the spot you know think about it complain contemplate a little bit i like that go back the next day because he's hitting the other side he wanted to front 270 which is also fucked um, and he starts hitting it. Like, I'm taking my time, no rush. So he's well into his, like, 270 battle uh, before I even start 50-ing it. So I do maybe, like, four or five 50s just to feel like because I never hit the rail before. It's really steep, and that was kind of a thing that was like, oh, fuck, I'm like, you're really, like, slapping down on the, in the landing. And then, I mean, push comes to shove, I just have to try it, and then I was up there, like, ready to drop in, and I was, like, in my head, I'm like... I might break my legs right now, but let's go. I have to try it because I cannot stop thinking about this trick. So I was prepared for that, which is pretty fucked, but like, here we go. And then a uh, few attempts, I just come off the on the outside, not the inside, and it's like, oh, this is, is not too bad. It's scary, but it's not too bad. But then I'm like, you don't want to be sessioning this thing, you know? So I'm getting it all into my head, and then like at the end of it, uh, it's not that many tries, I would say, maybe like 10 or something, but... I'm, like, thinking about my dad and shit. Like, yo, this one's for you. Like, I'm going deep within myself to find, like, let's fucking go, you know? Also, a trick that I found, found out that I like to laugh about, and like, if people are having a hard time landing tricks, which I can, like, I'm not that fucking strong, but it's just, like, I forgot about, like, actually tightening my legs. Like, actually tightening my fucking glutes. Like, tight your butthole. So I'm, like, thinking about my dad. Like, this one's for you, but I'm also thinking... Tie your butthole, tie your butthole in the landing. <laughs> like back when I did up, and then like the landing is, and then I got it, and it was like really satisfying. Trip. Why does tightening your butthole help you land? Because you're just like you're tightening the biggest muscles uh, of your body, the glutes, <clears throat> big old glutes. That help? It yeah, did. Yeah, help. I think it does. Yeah, you got like, to. Yeah, that, you got to remember when you, when to you land. Don't have the landing gear. That's the thing is yeah. you don't want Bambi legs. You can. Bambi you can. Legs. You don't want Bambi legs. Gumby you want, legs. You want to come down with. There's some. so many like steps, right? So I'm thinking about the 180. Mm-hmm. But I also have to think about the landing because if I'm not, I'm just going to be splatting every time. Splat, splat, splat. And the way, if you come naturally on a back 180, you come off to the outside, which is putting you into the death trap of the sea. So mm-hmm. that's why that one's oh. especially scary. Yeah, but the the thing about this sea is got it's got a lot of legs. Yeah, true. You could get your board in there, but it's like way less uh, like likely than a normal one. You know, so that was very very helpful for the uh, attempts. I like this uh, trick mentality thing because I, I kind of want to. I had an epiphany the other day when we were hitting that long rail in Mammoth that 
the front board. The three thousand uh, foot long row. One hundred and twenty six <laughs> foot front board. The centimeters. What, what three thousand centimeters. <laughs> uh, I, I realized this with it. It it's almost like if you're trying to attract somebody that you're into, right? Like if you're going, if you're into, if you, if you want to attract a female, for example, right? You, you don't want to be too desperate is what I realized about it because then it kind of repulses, like it doesn't want you to get it. It's like a, a, a girl. You'll a, never get this. You'll never yeah, get yeah, this. Exactly. That kind of, that kind exactly. Of and then you get yeah. frustrated. You want it. If you want it too bad, you get so frustrated that it clouds your judgment. So some, I've like on that one, I realized it was like I'm just gonna let it come to me, mm-hmm. and it was like you dirty I, dog. I don't even I don't even care. You know what? I don't even care if I get this. Mm-hmm. It, that was, and and I was the least likely to go off the end of that fucking thing, to be honest with you. But I didn't even care. And it's it's like attracting. So if you're if you're going after somebody, you know you wanna mm-hmm. you wanna uh, what's the word court them. You know there's a way to do it's it. You don't you, chase, you, right? you don't want to be too desperate. I think that's the same way with tricks. You don't want to want it too bad because then you get too frustrated. And it'll mm-hmm. cloud your judgment. There's also it depends on the spot, but you have to have a, a level of that in it for show. And then I landed my trick way before Fridge did, and he was like, "Dude, I started this fucking thing way before <laughs> you, and you're just gonna land it before me." And then I and then I went over to like his zone because I was all focused. So these rails are just like on the opposite side of each other. Mm-hmm. I walk over to him and he's like, "Dude, your landing's all fucked up. It's up. It's uphill." Mm-hmm. Oh, what? Because he was just so focused on the trick. But, like, you have to, like, help yourself a little bit. So I just dug out the mound that was in his landing, and then, like, in, within three tries, he had it. Because he was so good every time, you know? But it was just getting on the back mm-hmm. seat and wheeling out, and I don't know. I didn't know Fridge hit the streets. He hit the streets, and then he back to 70, the same rail I did just after that. And then I iced that little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, hey, is it okay if I back to 70? Yeah, for sure. Do your thing. And then after that, we went and hit another rail for Greenberg. But Which one? It's like the the crazy kink that you just hit that odd bottom down flat down with a long flat. Mm-hmm. And you switch front board it? Yeah, the switch front board one. Yeah, good yeah. clip. That one's a fun, fun reel. Good yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, another kind of a sneaky clip that I think it was early, I think it was in Brain Dead Heart Attack maybe, but um, where you come in, you like duck under a bridge, you backslide, and then you stand up and thread the needle through two little mm. deals. I love that clip. That was also, doesn't, doesn't look that scary, but it was pretty scary. Because I'm going very fast into this, and I was like, oh, don't hit your forehead, you know, and this fucking brick thing. But that was, yeah, that was a cool little guy, I guess. It was fun to get. After that, people were, like, just sending me duck spots. and Like, ooh, you're the duck guy. Like, <laughs> That's more of a coffin. Could, yeah, like, but you're, like, ducking on the shit or, like, shining on the shit. You just become the like, duck guy. So Kuska. Every, every duck, every dynasty, yeah. duck dynasty over here. Duck, duck. Kuska, Goose shout out to Swedish filmer homie. Kuska, he, he was just, like, kept sending me <laughs> these kind of spots. I'm like, dude, I can do other shit than just nah, duck. Also, duck after guy. bench press, like, I wanted to do, to do bench press to, like, oh, I like mini shredding and, like, creative stuff. And then after that, it's just like, oh, mini shred guy, like... Here's a bench, like mini shit, like which I also like, but I I was like, dude, I'm not just that. I think, I think, maybe that was also a thing. You're for, the Peking duck, Denver. dude. I don't fucking know. I'm just <laughs> no, I do like you. You're you do have an interesting blend of conventional A grade rail tricks, creativity, and mini shred. It's okay, it's a good it's a good balance. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get pigeonholed. You, nobody wants to you don't want to get put in a box. Nobody wants to be the wanna, Chad's gap guy. Yeah. You know that's why I don't yeah. do that shit. You know. <laughs> I feel like the, the Chad's guy. Gap guy wants to be the Chad's Gap guy. That's like their thing. Oh, I, They're into I'm it. I'm so far away from everything. They're down. Dropping in on that fucking thing. That's for sure. All right, we got to talk skits. First yeah. first and foremost, I got to talk about my favorite one. The best one, I think. That Your be- your best work uh, is the Harold and Kumar reference uh, where he's like, why don't you go jerk off to some snowboard videos, asshole? And then it cuts to you. Uh, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, Pretending that I don't jerk off to store movies, but hey, we've all been there. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, it might be on the background. I'm not saying you like actually jerk off while you're like, that's what's stimulating you. Maybe it is. I don't know. But we've all been there. Yikes. God damn it. Um, How do you feel about that? The jerking or the skit? The skit. The skit. The skit? I, I was like, honestly, not that sure I was going to post it because I was like, is this too like crazy or like, are people going to vibe or not and then at the end of the day it's just like i think it's funny i'm gonna post it and then people ate that shit up 
which well, is fun. We got a guest question from Pika Berger. Ooh, lovely. Here we go. Hey, Freddie, it's Pika. Jesse and I are sitting in bed talking about you, which we do sometimes. So I hope that doesn't freak you out. But I just wanted to know about your acting aspirations because I saw your commercial recently where you are repping the Norwegian post office and I was blown away. How did you start acting and what are your plans? Because I must see more. Okay, thanks. Bye. Micah's so lovely. She's the best. Such a soothing voice. Send me some, like, meditation <laughs> stuff, uh, Pika, please. The acting has just been, like, kind of happening organically. Like, it hasn't been, like, a thing that I've planned out to do. But uh, Casper, the creative reduction, and um, my, one of my best friends, he is, like, legit. He went legit, and he does legit commercials and music videos and shit. So we have to do a major shout-out, big super horn to Casper, because I would not be here my snowboarding wise without that guy without my parents or without casper so yep he just did a radio head music video how fucked up is that you go from duction video parts to award-winning radio head shit that's fucked uh acting so he's put me in some shit like some music videos and his f- swedish friend uh, jacob markey who's a director he's apparently also liked my stuff over the years and wanted me to try out for this post office ad that Pike is referencing, referring to, which is like a Forrest Gump a kind of parody, but it's pretty fucking epic, like big ass budget and shit. And this was happening all in the midst of like the shit we were talking about earlier with like love life and bachelor degree and stress, 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 but all the good things kind of. But uh, that, that was a really fun experience and uh, I liked it and I would like to do more of it, but it has to be... I don't want to be the, oh, I want to be an actor, like, put me on TV, look at me, blah, blah, blah. Like, it'd have to be happening organically to some extent. And if it would be something funny, I would tend to enjoy it more, I think. But I'll cry. I'll fucking cry if you want me to, you know. But uh, that would be fun. Also, the pay is really good. So why wh- why wouldn't I? So we, if we got some L.A. Hollywood execs watching this, you know, hit, hit a boy up. Hit a boy up. I if think you can crack into the scene too in, in your country. You go big. You'd be like the dude in that country. The dude? We'll see. Well, it's like a small scene though, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a smaller pool. Yeah. I'm not gonna push it, but we'll see. See what happens. I'd love to see it. I would love to see it too. I saw you sent me that that video last night of one of your skits and I was blown away. You're not you're a good actor. Yeah, the new dude, let's talk about the, your your him new and project. LeBronc need to team up in a skit. Yeah, the Eclipse. New, the new part Eclipse. Will probably be out by the time it'll be out. Airing. It'll be out. Uh, it's a fun little one because I went <laughs> on a dino trip to Ottawa in March. This is like right after the the bone in my like rib cage on the back had healed, which took two months. It was so annoying, like it never healed. So I went there with like without actually having to had snowboarded that season, pretty much. Day one, I end up in the ER after twisting my knee. Like that shit is depressing. Have you ever been to the Ottawa ER? I actually have. I, I have oh, as well. I was there with someone else. Frank so. April broke his God neck. damn. Thank God I had my phone or else I would have like fucking lost my mind even more. Like it just says on the screen waiting time, five hours and 16 minutes. You're just looking at it the whole time. And uh, but luckily the knee wasn't fucked. I was like really afraid I torn it, but because it was really painful and it kind of heard the sound and la la la. But the guy, the doctor was like really sure that he's adamant. You don't even need an MRI. Just gotta chill, okay? So I'm like, this is a ten day trip. So I have four or five days off, uh, but I still managed to get uh, what then ended up being five clips, Uh, and it became sort of like a little challenge for me. Like, okay. How can I make something that I think is fun and interesting with just five clips? Is it possible? Or is it just going to be like, oh, five clips, like an edit, short one, or put it in as some cameo stuff. But I, I like the idea of like trying to see what I could get with it. And so the one spot I'm trying to hit, I actually do it first try, but I was like hitting this ledge from the side. So I just duffed some snow on it because I, I thought the impact was going to be really shitty. But the one try I did with the snow on it, I got the, ra- like got the ledge to the end. I was like, oh, shit, this is easy, you know? And then I take the snow off and I just let the battle commence, you know? I just kept getting getting further and further away every t- attempt I did. And then I started doing gnarly slams. So at the end of it, I'm freaking out and I like, this is the first time meeting Dara. She was probably like, what the fuck is up with this guy? I'm like screaming, like, shoot me in the face, <laughs> you know, like losing my mind. 
Uh, and then I also kind of freak out, like, what's going on? Everything's backwards. So I just go, oh, something Benjamin Button. Like, it's I'm in backward plan. And when I'm, like, reviewing this footage and they're like, oh, maybe there's something, you know. And this is just – so this is January 5. Like, this is just finished up, like, kind of last month where I had this guy – at Bacon Production called Ula Jakob, who's uh, where Casper works, is like one of the best post production dudes in in Norway, and he just like, all right, let's make you look old, you know, if you, that's what you want. And there you go. So it's just a some silly little what did I watch edit, you know, which I like. I like. Oh, maybe there's some okay tricks, but also the person watching it can be like, that was weird. Okay, and that's it. Doesn't have to be more than that for me to be like happy with it. At first, I didn't know what I was getting into. It was like a little emo. And then that rap music hits. The Drizzy. The acting. Oh, God, and Drizzy. Benjamin Button's actually singing the lyrics, <laughs> yeah. a.k.a. Freddie Perry. It's incredible. It's mind-blowing. I haven't laughed out loud that hard yeah. uh, in the video part in a long time, Dude, so can, good you. job. I, I enjoyed l- watching you laugh. Dude, mm-hmm. it was yeah. incredible. Thank you. And some of those really? tricks, dude. Yeah. That crazy one where you do that little nose bash thing on the yeah, the Thank fifty. You. Let's talk dangerous. about the fifty fifty nose. That that's dangerous. like a, maybe an MD and no, NBD? that's like no? a Cole Navin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know which who did it first though. One yeah. of those boys it looks dangerous. Both of those guys are amazing. The beanie drag. I, that was the first time I tried it, and you like I was also losing my mind on that one because you could feel your head just like skimming the thing. Ugh. So well, I wasn't up. really There's hyped on the ways. one I got, but I just didn't want to try it anymore because it was too scary. I thought it looked dope. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Shout out, call name and Minecraft. God damn it. Yeah, those rendered are useless is a quality amazing flick. flicking part. You know, it's interesting thinking about you know a video part. It's about emotion, right? Like I watched that Eclipse, five clips. Great pun on words, but I was laughing out loud, LOLing as they call it, LOLing, and. Uh, you know what that is? That's an emotion. Yeah. And, and and I think that the worst thing you can do for a video part is feel nothing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whether the emotion is joy, laughter, you know, or it can be like, you know, kind of sappy. Mm-hmm. Where you're like a little heart feels. You mm-hmm. get some heart feels. That was beautiful. Like beautiful. That was beautiful. You could feel mm-hmm. upset. That's something too. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. get mad and yell at the screen, but you still felt something. Mm-hmm. So maybe some metal. You're, you're like, I want to fucking go like tackle somebody right now. I'm gonna run through a wall. Speaking of that, like emotion. So the second Duction movie we made, my very good friend Torger Barre, Torger Barre, shout out this guy. Torger so we Barre. filmed Duction, which is Duction Two. It was called Claustrophobia. It was like claustrophobia, and this is a fun word we thought of. Super dumb. Claustrophobia. Yeah. Just when like you it. know you get the sense of claustrophobia. It's just ugh, it's a weird one. He uh, so he had a horrible accident in New Zealand where he broke his back and then he got paralyzed from his hips down and he's in a wheelchair and like he's doing well with the life and he's just because he's the most amazing positive person in the world. But at the time when the movie came out at the premiere, nobody knew if he was going to walk again or not. So in the video it says "Get well soon, Torgar," right? And we were just at the pre premiere like a bunch of people we were watching this and he the, uh, the song is uh, Beach House. It gets very sad. Everybody's like hoping that our friend is gonna be okay, and like we're just like we're just crying, you know. We're just crying at the event because it's it's like the the tricks he's doing, and because such an amazing like fun loving guy who's been so underrated his whole life. He's doing like these amazing tricks, the song and everything, and it's like get well, and everybody's like, oh my god, this yeah, this is a crazy emotional moment. Uh, and uh, but yeah, like I said, he does really well uh, with his life and. Uh, Great human being, mm. for sure. Love that. Um, okay, we got to talk about dino- dinosaurs will die. Uh, I think we should maybe start with your current board mm-hmm. because it's incredible. It's got uh, mock sliders on it, like a genius. It's yeah. a genius ripoff. Why don't you talk us through this mock dino's sliders. board? Yeah, because it's a genius ripoff. Talk us through the reasoning on the graphic. It's incredible. Uh, dinosaurs will die, the best. Dude, the best graphics in the game. I mean, can we just... I mean, I'm biased. But I'm in agreement with that. I'm, I'm I biased. Not, but I was looking around on. the Milo Pro Sale, and uh, there's a lot of bad graphics out there. <laughs> there's a lot like, of bad graphics. Like, what are you doing, let's not, man? Just, <laughs> let's uh, stay positive, not yeah, talk about the shitty on the ones. Good. Focus on the good. Because there's a lot of them. God, yeah. there's a lot of them. But this is uh, my uh, sixth board for the dinosaurs, and uh, it was kind of like a joke thing where we're like we start like I don't know who we is. It was probably my brain uh, about something Einsteiny, like a sp- like a joke of oh being like the Einstein of Snowbrain, like some sort of genius. And then I had this uh, graphic 
This is actually based off a video who, uh, that Kuska wanted me to film for Scandinavians 2 as an intro. So I put up the green screen. I'm playing a doctor, uh, playing this, this professor guy, which is a tribute to an old Swedish uh, movie from the 90s. He ended up never using it. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Okay, cool. And then it just popped out of my head like, oh, that we can make this professor vibe. I just drew it. Blah, blah, blah. And then the genius, I just used to love the brand genius so much. I never had a board. Like the team was just amazing. And during this like snowboard show I host sometimes in Oslo, like we had this quiz and one of my favorite questions, like there's a photo of the genius team, but they're like colored out. So you can just see the shapes and it's like, who was on the original genius team? Do you know that? Do you know who's on the original? Uh, I could probably do I pretty good. Some. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Wall. Wall yeah. uh, Kevin Jones. Uh, Terry Dikidis. Uh, Andreas Vig. Vig. Andreas Vig. How many? Um, and yeah, then how many I guess there? for AMS, you I had. I think um, that was it. I think it was just four. Okay, because yeah. there I, was. I, I made the quiz, but it's been a long time. <laughs> there's, there's I think also, that's it. Joe Eddie was riding him. As this a, guy's going AM on Joe Eddie was an AM on Genius, I remember. Joe Eddie. Joe Eddie. Sick. Mammoth. Yeah, half white. Mammoth. The, the Anaconda box. Mm hmm. Mammoth clips. Any hooch. Excuse me. Little burp. I love the uh, green, too. That's a great green. It's inspired by one of uh, Kevin Jones's old pro models, but this one's way greener. Like he had a yellowish kind of green, and mm, I just I like, played around with the colors, and I'm really stoked on it. You the picked the Pantone on that? Yes. And then we have this like uh, genius spoof uh, logo on the base. Yeah. It's fun. The sliders are my favorite part. And it's funny, like people, oh, I wish they were real. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. That. You don't want sliders. Fuck that. But it's a fun little homage. The funnest homage. part about it was like, I made this graphic. And I'm not I'm not gonna like make it and sell it without knowing that these guys are down, you know, because that would suck if they hated on it. I have guilty conscience syndrome. I don't want anybody to feel bad about like something that I did. So I DM Kevin Jones. We obviously didn't didn't follow each other. I'm like, hey, <laughs> Kevin Jones, like la la la. Uh, I'm designing a board for Dinosaurs Will Die, and like this is the idea. And I had some rough sketches, and he immediately it says red. That's very rare. Like I fucking sent it in and it's just like boom and i just pretty much asked him are you okay are you okay with this because if you're not i'm just not gonna do it i got other th then i can make something else and he's just writing forever like i'm sitting in, like looking at kevin jones just writing 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 like the bubble like, oh you're my saying god the bubble, the bubble. i'm yeah. like oh my god he hates it he's like gonna fucking like destroy me la, la, la. and then i just get a really sick reply that was like this is fucking awesome and this is what genius is all about and the only catch is that you give me one <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. He hasn't got one yet, but hopefully we make that happen. Thank you, You know, genius. he might have, like, swiped, look at it, and left his phone and went to the bathroom, made a sandwich. Exactly, because, like, you're at the other end is You never know just what's chilling. going on. Like, I always the, wonder when you yeah. see it, like, show up, and then it disappears, then mm. it shows back up, it disappears. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk about one of our sponsors. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about hippies. It's a great snack if you're in the backcountry or you're at your office job, nine to five, buds. Yes, the uh, chickpea tortilla mixture, delicious. This is a, one of my favorite new snacks right now. I've been putting them down in between podcasts when I'm doing office work. It's great. They're gluten-free, vegan, and non-GMO. So if you're looking for a healthy alternative that tastes just as good as a freaking Dorito, it's not like uh, eating cardboard like some of these healthy snacks. They're bomb. So check out uh, hippies.com and use promo code BOMBHOLE20 for 20% off. Again, hippies.com, promo code BOMBHOLE20 for 20% off. All right. I have another Patreon question from Gute Skare. Oh, yeah, Goutman, yeah. Goutman. He's got yeah. the gout. He's huh? got gout. He's got the gout. Yeah, gout. You don't want to stay away from Sorry, red, he got meat. The red, gout, red meat. Sorry, got the gout, Red meat. Stay away from red meat. And lobster. Lobster. Yeah. Oh, is lobster yeah. gout provoking? Those rich rich people's foods. I think it's also like <laughs> chugging booze doesn't help you. Yeah, all of it. All yeah. the expensive stuff. So anyways, the gout man yeah. says. Stay the away from the lobster. Yep. He says, what is snowboard show 
at Neil. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, are you fluent? How did that- you come up with the idea, and when are you going to take it to the Bombhole Studio or a stage in SLC? You know what? You're in the Bombhole Studio, You're so what's, studio, what's yeah. up? I've been scheming about doing the show over here, actually. It's uh, so the snowboard show at Nia, yeah, which. Trend, which in the English I've called it Snowboard Night at the Museum, aka Sick Fuck Show, because it's a really weird show. It's not the same as the Snowboard Awards that you were talking about. Okay, that's like the Snowboard Federation has their like award shows, and they wanted me to host it. Like, uh, so me and a friend, a friend of mine called Bendik, we we did it and tried to make some funny skits for it, like some uh, Norsk tipping, which is like the lottery, which used to be the main sponsor of the national team. So we made a skit where we like broke into their offices and stole the lottery balls and we'd like hand them out and yeah, dumb shit like that. But the snowboard night at the museum is a different one that came from actually it was like supposed to be a Greenberg premiere, the movie. And I was like, what can I do differently? That's so it's just not like come watch a movie, leave or like come watch a movie party, leave. So I just started thinking about like, hey, maybe I because Nya is a comedy stage, comedy club in Oslo. What if we have like stand up shit, like uh, actual comedians who come with their little interpretation of the concept of snowboarding? Maybe I make some funny dumb shit. Maybe we have some guests on stage and talk about video parts and like have a quiz for the nerds, like do a full night, full nighter. So that's what we did. So we did the legendary nerd quiz, which like we had a bunch of teams and there's only one team that got like one team got 10 points and the rest of them got like zero, you know, because we were trying to find the nerds, right? Everybody was complaining how hard it was. So we did it slightly easier the next year, but. And then we, we do guests who get introduced to the stage via a uh, video part. So if you were a guest, we'd watch one of your video parts. You come on stage, we talk shit, rant, like about anything. Hopefully not about snowboarding even, just like bullshit. And then at the end, we watch your favorite video part. So we had some pretty cool guests, like Andreas Wig was on there. Uh, we FaceTimed Matt Johnson live, pretty sick. We Yeah, some fun stuff. And then at the end, of it, we watched uh, Greenberg. So I've done that three times, one in Trondheim where I, where I made... Best of Trondheim snowboarding over the past 30 years, which was like <laughs> way much more work than I thought it was going to be. Figuring out getting footy for that stuff. Uh, and I recently did a skateboard version, which was also really fun. So we had Deeds on stage and uh, a legendary skater called Carl Edwards from Oslo. So it's just a fun, silly show where we just fucking roast each other. And uh, yeah, it's really fun. We did a spot guesser one, like. We had a nerd on stage trying to guess. I like zoomed in on, you know, ge- geo guessers. Vibes. Yeah, yeah. Zoom in on skate spots in Oslo and like see if he could guess it. Like do upside down, black, white, like mm-hmm. shit like that. So I've been, I've been thinking about doing one in Salt Lake. Mostly so because it's fun, but also I need some money. You know, I'm a broke ass <laughs> little bitch. <laughs> like, Honesty. <laughs> dude, I moved out of my apartment December 1st, came to Minnesota. And since then, I've been like waiting for some job opportunity callbacks from like some interviews. Haven't heard anything, which is look, look, not <laughs> looking too good. Which is fine. So as of right now, I'm homeless, pretty much. And I've extended my trip twice. So now we'll just see when I go back, I'll deal with the whole living situation. But do if maybe we could do a show over here, it'd be fun. That sounds amazing. You don't have a, a house, a home. A uh, crib. As of right now, I don't. I'm I'm I have all my shit in storage at, at my storage friend's unit. at my friend's basement. Uh, and then I, I packed a board bag and a backpack and now I'm in the States for I don't know how long. Rambling but, man, I love it. It's pretty fun. Incredible. I'm curious about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you said Trondheim in a very American way, but I feel like it's more like Trondheim. 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 So that's where Torger is from. Okay. Just Torger, from. Uh, um, uh, he comes from outside of outside of Trondheim, actually. Klabu. 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 Uh, Klabu. They have a very distinctive dialect uh, up there. Norway has a lot of different accents and dialects compared to how small it is because mm. of mountain ranges and bullshit like that. Interesting. Okay, and then the other thing, um, what other you do you have off the top of your dome? Any of these these quizzes? Besides, you did you did genius. But if you have something else, I'd lo- mm. I'd love to take a stab. You take a stab. A lot of it is interactive, so I like show a clip and it'd be oh, like, who's got this? It. Got it. Okay. How is this all received? Uh, how it's received is this sounds uh, awesome. I've done four shows, all been sold out, mm. and every time I like, hey, remember, like you should get a ticket now. It's in three weeks. The night of, I get so many fucking phone calls and texts. Oh, can you throw me in there? Is there any rooms? Like, dude, you're blowing it. I mean, you got to believe. If you believe, you get a ticket straight away. It's I I I enjoy it actually when they hit me up and like, dude, you can't come. There's no you room. say no. There's no room. You throw like, the there's no physically down. no room, and this place has rules. Like, 
Nobody. It's a sit down thing. Like Fire it's a full evening. You yeah, can't stand inter- like this for three hours. Yeah. It lasts for like three hours. It's pretty fun. Dude, I feel like that would go off in What's Salt Lake. What's a quiz? I mean, I did make a little quiz, uh, f- like a little hot mash. Give them a quiz. For you guys. Dude, quiz them up. Did we got a quiz? I didn't really. It's not like a quiz. Is there math like, problems? No. Yeah. If this is math related, we won't yeah, be doing out. well. We're no, not it's be out. Great. They're just all different. I mean, we have one that's straight quiz. It's called What is the Third Largest City in America by Population? Third Largest? Moscow. The third Largest Moscow, Moscow. in America? <laughs> <laughs> you are failing this quiz, man. Third Largest? Okay. Uh, well, third. So New Boston. York and LA are out. Mm hmm. Looking good. So the third, I Not mean. Not Boston. Um, I don't think Boston's on third. top 10, even. Really? Shite. Yeah, I think Boston. Um, Chicago. Ooh, shy Chicago. Town, dude. That was out of good, there. dude. Okay, nice. keep them coming. The rest of them aren't really quizzes, but is this is snowboard we related. Talk, we talked that one through. Oh, you I got, started a, with I got one snowboard related. Marry, fuck, kill, indie, tail grab method. Oh, damn it. Do you, does it mean like my. I'm, I'm questioning about this because as it pertains to me, because like. Age I, is going to decide that for I you. I don't have a good method. No, this is like what tricks you want to do or like, like marry, th- fuck, that kill, I right? can do right now. No, like what do you choose? That should be easy then. If you can't do method, you just kill it. Yeah, you kill, I'll kill it because age but is going to decide. I'm going to say like you. if I could have a perfect method, I would marry that. But it's yeah, just but no, it this is like looks reality. Awful every time I film one. Okay, um, so we'll kill the method at as much as I, unless it's in a half pipe though. I can do them good in the half pipe. How often do you do? I can't pipe? physically grab my tail. <laughs> Okay, so you're killing the tail grab. Long time, dude. It's just tail grab is out. I got short arms, man. So Bud's can't physically grab his tail. (laughs) I mean, give yourself twenty more years, boys, and you'll see. Ask yourself this again, you know. I'm gonna. I mean, this is like a match. I like them all. This is like a five second thing. Okay, sorry. Real quick, and I guess I'll go marry. You're I mean, the indie's so you're just, good, feel good. I'm going to go indie. The, the marry reality indie. is, though, you're just stuck with the indie, so you I'm might gonna, as well marry I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to fuck to do. them. No, because it's spinning. You can't do a tail grab spinning. Or you can't do a method spinning. I'm killing the method, and I'm and I'm fucking the tail grab. Yeah, yeah I think I like that's it. my move, too. Why can't you do a method spinning? Bang the tail I mean, grab. I, I personally can't. Oh, you personally can't. Got you. Yeah. All tail right. grab is so resourceful for everything. Mm. It's like you, you know, front it's side, like back side, calf. You got short arms like me. Man. You just <laughs> pick your leg up and put it in your hand. You don't even need to. It's more of a bring your tail to your Dude, hand. Ever, just, <laughs> where is that thing? Do I, do I even have a tail? I don't know. What, else is, what kind of questions I got? It's pretty funny. We do like uh, the guess the video part song, but it's uh, a friend of mine who sings. She sings a song a cappella. Oh, <laughs> instead of, It's just like That's stuff incredible. like that. And like people get dressed up and stuff. We had uh, one guy dress up as uh, Bunny Rabbit. Like, who is he dressed up as? Mm. You know, who is he dressed up? There's oh, a guy. in snowboarding. Yeah, gotcha. All right, I have a question for you about uh, NBDs. You've got a lot of NBDs. Do I though? Do it, I in the world though? of obscurity? I don't front know. board I don't... jacket zip up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, NBD. That counts. Huh? Some guy might have been like, yeah, cold. you never like, know. Mid box. Mid anaconda I mean, box, dude. On that that rail you hit, you could have made a sandwich. You're up there so long, that 130 foot rail. You done anything? You played a game of chess. Could have played the skin flute. It looks yeah. like I'm just and chilling on my phone, but I'm looking for. <laughs> Buds is actually. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Freddie, but Buds is classically trained in the skin flute. Yes, the skin flip, skin flute, skin flute. He has wow. a recital coming up, actually. Daily, I practice. <laughs> wow. Sometimes three times a day. <laughs> Dude, right there with you. <laughs> with you. <laughs> so when are you going to get this thing going, dude, in Salt Lake? I mean, will people come? 100 dude, heads? Where are, we, where are we hosting this shit? We this need 100 place, seats. This place is filled with snowboarding, people that love mm-hmm. snowboarding. I mean, are you right. kidding me, dude? 10 buck entry. Cheap as fuck. That's 10 buck That's Venmo. Cheap, dude. That's Venmo to Ted so he can PayPal me the, the, the dough. <laughs> Sounds like some money laundering. Yes. That's going on here. What on it the is. PayPal That's the Venmo and- <laughs> what it is. That's what Cash it is. Cash only. Uh, yeah. I'm going to duct tape it to his body, fly back to Norway. I mean, if you got right. like a, a I mean, thing we, we could. You can find a venue. There's venues here. Mm-hmm. We got mm-hmm. venues. We got venues. Good. All right. We got a guest question from <laughs> Jesse Bertner. Here we go. Ah. Freddie. It's your friend, Jesse. Who? I was wondering if you could tell the people a little bit about Papa Smurf. Who is Papa Smurf? 
where is Papa Smurf? And what kind of crazy adventures did you guys get into? Thanks. The lovely little... Was he playing that music, or he oh, just yeah. cued yeah, that he, up? He was playing. playing. Mandolin or those little mini... That was incredible. Like ukulele, that was, ukulele, that's what he it is. He just yeah. took the whole guest question thing up a whole new level. I'd like to see more of that. You nice. could do that with the skin flute, with a little background <laughs> yeah, I music. I was thinking about that. I was hey. trying to join the band. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I have to say... <laughs> Is he stopping? <laughs> Can you turn that you resistance? Hear the pudding smack? Can you skip this part and go to straight to JP Walker? Hang out. <clears throat> the pudding smack in the background to the B. Sounds like somebody's plunging a toilet in the background. What's going on there? Papa Smurf. Let's keep this one short. It's a shovel, a blue one I found uh, in a warehouse. It's like an industry dig dirt kind of blue shitty thing. I would bring to the states. I'd draw, write Papa Smurf on it because all the think tank uh, people would uh, name their like uh, toughies, different names. It's like so cute, you know. So mine was Papa Smurf. It's like a nice crisp blue, and I brought it to the states, and everybody's like, <laughs> "What is this fucking dumbass shovel?" You know, because it's not a toughie, but it's just way better. It's so ergonomically shaped. It's long. It's got a bigger head. It's sharp at the at the tip, you know, it's a little sharp tip. Shape the lips all nice. And, Sounds uh, like a show that's going to break out there. Papa Smurf. And then I got a yellow one, Mellow Yellow, that just doesn't do anything. It just like, skims the lips a little bit and chills. And uh, that's been on some adventures. Like Think Tank came out to Oslo a few times. Jesse's used Papa Smurf quite a few times. It broke. Like the tip of it broke off, so I don't know where it is right now, to be honest. Mm. It's in the – so when I turned pro for dinos, it, that's the ad. I'm jumping over my shovel thing. Yeah, a little – Little side, Papa Smurf. Little you side. can see Buds has, Buds has had a toughie for about ten years, and it's, it doesn't have a single scratch on it. Sing, Dude, my, never been used. My, my plastic still off. Tag. <laughs> dude, just keep it. it dude, new era, like fresh. A half moon crescent on this thing, dude. Like he's moved mountains. Yeah, let me tell dude, you. mountains. Of it's stuff. just in a bag with a receipt still there. <laughs> dude, I bet mine is more worn down than yours, actually. Uh, I'll bring it's in my car. Yeah, we could do a shovel. We could do a shovel uh Mine's, shovel off. Shovel I'm gonna off. say mine yeah. is more worn. Yeah, down. we can check we'll check the wear marks on it. I like that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Mine's got a half moon crescent inside. A lot of people refer to B- B- Buds as the Gary Milton of shovelers for photography. <laughs> Just moving mountains. Moving yeah. mountains. At Len Jorgensen, we went on a trip to film for like I guess these guys were maybe filming I can't remember if it was the Scandinavians or random investors or something, but uh so Eric Carlson, shout out, he was jumping off a roof as he does. And uh, Kuska set up a t- like a static timeline of the building session. <laughs> oh, those are the best. <laughs> and then like we're building this like giant mound for him to land on, and Len is just like leaning on the shovel on the left side of the corner. This is the whole timeline, <laughs> just like. And he <laughs> likes to pretend that he like shovels and like uh, worth worth ec- work ethic, which he does have sometimes. But that night was just like horrendous. I'd love to bring that up. Busted, dude. I like yeah, to keep busted. a keep an eye out for the filmers that are setting yeah, up the yeah, time yeah, yeah, thing, like... and then just move around all extra fast. <laughs> yeah. Wow, dude, look at him go. <laughs> you know what, though, buds? The, the banter and entertainment is worth it while you're like, I got to go uh, have some celebratory diarrhea. And you're like, what? All right. That... <laughs> um, okay. We're going to keep things moving here. Yeah. I'm curious about some more trick nerd stuff. What's your, what's your take on nollies? Nollies? Cool. I'm mm-hmm. done. But it also depends because you can do a shitty nollie. Mm. You know? Got to be done right. Like, you like to just like, ooh, dip your nose after the jump so it looks like you're nollying, but you're not. That doesn't count. I mean, you have to like nolly. So I have to do it pretty early, I would say. There's some good nolliers out there. Who's a, who's a notable nollier? I mean, is there anyone else worth mentioning than Sean Genevieve's? Justin Benny. But yeah, yeah, I was going to go Justin, Justin Benny. Benny. I'm going, I'm going, Geno's got bigger nollies. Than yeah, he's Benny. got ups. Yeah, he's got ups. Yeah, he's got ups. Yeah, we're talking ups. We got to talk another Dino's graphic, too. The bench press graphic. That was great. The weight. The weight. Yeah, like, the weight. Yeah. I like uh, graphics. Uh, I like a lot of different graphics, but I like ones that they use the whole base. Yes. So this was kind of inspired by, um, I don't know what brand it is, actually, but Seth Hewitt used to ride in, I think it's Shakedown or something. That's my the favorite lamp. board graphic of all time. Is it a lamp? No, it's. I always it? thought it was a worm, but it's not. It's what? like a green. It's a long, cool thing. It's like a green. What brand? Capita. Oh, Capita. It's, it's, that, dude, that's so is fucking that crazy. Is that Shakedown? It is Shakedown. 
I always thought it was a worm. My favorite Mike but Tyson. I don't know what it is. I love that you said it, dude. Yeah. Sorry. And I then just, um, if we're talking dinos, dude, I gotta go Brass Monkey, the Bogart. That's a good one. A bunch yeah, of the Bogart. Frozen Bogart. Yeah. Yeah. Frozen. Uh, and then it's like a split between like something. Okay, I like something long. Like I want something that's like covering the whole base, but also like the stripes. So like. Solomon, what the fuck is that model called? The Solomander? No. No, no not that piece of shit. You're going Solomon, uh, huh? Like, Benedict type vibes. I had, like, two blue, like, stripes. Oh, that's Underneath the Benedict board. I don't know yeah, what it's called. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, kind of mixed between that and then, like, Jack. the bench press thing, obviously, like, lifting weights and that, oh, you could do funny life. He's, like, lifting the board. Ooh, like, basic mm-hmm. shit like that. But it's just funny. Like, I like the clean top sheet and then just, like, something going on on the, ba- uh, the base. That's pretty much it. Good yeah. stuff. What's more important uh, for you, the top sheet or the base? Mm. Uh, base. Slab and die, you know? You have any slab slab and there. Do you have any boards hanging at your house? And is it base or top sheet if so? I don't have a house, so no. But in the basement, there's some graphic. I'm trying to save, like, at least one of my boards, you mm-hmm. know? Because uh, I know people regret not doing that. So mm-hmm. I at least have one one of each one of my graphics. My favorite, honestly, is probably the director one, though. Yeah. Like the beige one with the the... The chair and stuff at the bottom. I imagine like, we I just like pop the these up. Sim- simple, yeah, simple graphic. You know. Question: If you're gonna hang them, would you hang them base or top sheet? Uh, I would hang them top sheet just because it's easier and it looks better. Like just the, it makes more sense. Yeah, the way the board bends. Yeah, it's a makes tough more sense. Go. Makes more sense. More details like oh name or like size or like da da da. Did you see Union those? They throw those board hangers now. They have, they sell board hangers which are pretty dope. No, I did not. Makes it easy. Can you hang it upside down? You gotta hang it uh, top sheet out. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I hang all the boards. Also, base, the base, base is out. often like fucked. You know, <clears throat> like it's just dirty. Well, you gotta and throw the new ones up too in the crib, maybe. Uh, I ain't got that many You wanna go boards. used? All the, I'm not going used. I've hung up well. used. Chris has you a wonderful. Go you go down Chris's stairs. He's got a nice yeah. little. You, you little, should invite me over sometime for dinner. Yeah, we're neighbors. Let's do it. Okay, neighbors. You no broccoli. No broccoli. No broccoli. He may Apparently, shard himself. You can't even feed this guy. Really? Ted Borland is very uh, wary of my IBS, mm. which is a real thing. And we could set up a I new segment. Of, he's the one that has to smell my legendary farts. You know. Oh. Uh, we could set up a new thing with Ted and you. Then called name that shart. Name that shart. Name I saw the shart. fart dictionary out. In front name of that video people. shart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good that you got your bachelor's in the shart direction. Too. Yeah. yeah, shart good department. That, good uh, if you look in the prequels credit, this says fart direction. Straight mm. up. It says fart direction. Yeah, it does. Hell ye. You're going to be a shart director. I will. I've done that. Been there, done that. Okay, let's talk pub beer. Let's talk pub beer. You don't talk pub beer. You going to crack can? You should check if uh, they have a spot on the team, you know. I'm down. Welcome to the pub beer crap shoot. It's crisp. And th- it's cold, ice cold, and it is pub beer. It's delicious. It's cheap, and it's fun. If you're thinking about getting completely annihilated responsibly or having a, one or two. Uh, Every time. You're going to go pub beer. Mm-hmm. All it's right. tasting good. Now you got to roll some dice. Where are those things, buds? What are we doing? You know? There we go. How oh, many? Yeah, we got dice. Yeah, grab two of them. Dice galore over there. Going gold. Andrew Dice Clay. Goon Gears is six. Shout out to Goon. <sighs> so what What are we doing? What do I want? What do I want? You're going to roll, roll the dice, two dice. I'll tell you what you got to do. All right. The dice man. I'm going one at a time. Oof. Uno. Six. six. I don't, we don't see a lot of sixes. Six, 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 six. Uh, this question sucks, so we're going to go with seven. Hell ye. Who's your favorite? Who's one of your favorite people to party with? Carson Clefon. Mm, pro skater. Quick. That was a very fast yeah. answer. Damn. He's everybody's, your favorite skater's favorite partier. You know, uh, fun fun skaters, fact: I hit player. him up for a guest question on Instagram direct message, and uh, he did not get back to me. Mm. Ouch! He told me that this kook DM'd him, and he was like, "Nah, I didn't have it." <laughs> Freddie, you know this guy? I was like, "Nah, nah. <laughs> don't bail, bail. You don't yeah. have to, you yeah. don't want to go there. Yeah. Don't even go there. That would be that a guy. fun guest question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. we're gonna get into hot takes. You know the drill. Uh, if you had to pick your MJ of snowboarding, both male and female. We kind of talked about the, the the goat team earlier, uh, which I like. Oh, your team. Yes, Freddie's 100% superstar. Freddie's team, wonderful were, like, team of superstars. Pretty much my goats. But, I mean, MJ, it's hard to not say J.P. Walker, you know? It's hard to not say it. 
Which is also why I like having that team because then I could put all the other ones in there. You gotta pick one. <sighs> to you, as it pertains to me. Uh, as it pertains to me, I mean, like. To you. Travis Barker is an MJ. He's more like kind of, maybe like if you mix MJ with like Bobby Boucher <laughs> type vibes, we got <laughs> Travis Barker. So. The water boy. Yeah, water boy. Little, little, little Travis Barker. I mean, he's. Who that? Who yeah. there? If I have to choose one, we're not going team. You're going Bobby Boucher. Uh, so you're going J.P. Walker, and then we're going, uh, <laughs> so female, who you got? Marie-Francois. Uh, MFR, respect. Yeah, the uh, Any Means video part is just unreal and still would be, like, unreal today, mm. straight up. But also Zoe is getting there, I think. She's okay, dope. that's a good uh, segue into a new one we're asking for hot takes. Snowboarding an art or a sport? Uh, sport. Let's go sport. <laughs> yeah. Why, what if it's a lifestyle? Fuck. Well, then you can answer lifestyle. You go, none of the above. <laughs> See, none, of the, none above. of the above. I'm, yeah, just, not gonna, the above. I'm just not going to say that snowboarding's an art. Like, it's not for, like, nah. Let's go sport. Snowboarding's an art, man. Yeah. Let's go fucking, <laughs> fucking sport. Should I do Is snowboarding athlete? a sport or a shark? Okay. Most underrated <laughs> snowboarder. Who you got? Ooh. I already said Ted Borland, so uh, I'm just going to, like, throw in maybe Will Levine. Nice. Pretty fucking underrated. Ted Borland thinks you're the best snowboarder alive. He did? I've heard him say it. Like, I've cheated. Times. I just cheated, though, because I really said Ted, but I also could sneak in a little Will Levine in there. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. Steel or powder? Steel. Best style ever. Who you got? Um... I know you guys don't like the multiples, but I could easily make a Steve team, like the Steeziest Steve binding. It's you know? not that we don't like the multiples. The whole point of this is I know, the best. The game. There, there could only be one, you know? Mickle Bang. Great answer. JB Solberg. <laughs> <laughs> best video ever made. Uh probably after bang. Best board graphic ever made. <sighs> Ooh. Best board graphic. Uh I mean, it's got to be one of Geno's boards. I like the the one with a bunch of cats, where it's cats biting each other, just a biting snowboard, like because that's what everybody's doing, you know, just biting. He's got like this like yellowish with a bunch of purple cats biting each other's legs. It's pretty sick. I have that one. That's one. That's one he gave to me to put on the wall because I asked him for it. I love that one. I think uh, for D- DWD, I got to go uh, Matt Heenahan Mob Deep graphic. Mob Deep's pretty good too. Yeah, it's fucking good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if I've seen that one. I'm going to queue that up. <clears throat> but I do like... Oh, there's a lot of good ones. Let's throw that one out. It sounds like you're going to say UC. I like U- a lot of UC graphics. have been really cool. He was on my GOAT team. I forgot to say it. Uh, pant over or under the high back? I do both. One of each, you were saying. Yeah. That's tight. That's Jonas Inspo 100. And is, now I'm just so used to it that I can't undo it. So my left... I'm regular. My left pants are over the binding. My right, I just slide them in there. So the binding is outside of the... You still currently do this. I do. Jonas still doesn't do it. <laughs> I do it. It's just... It, just Because oh. one is usually strapped in all the time, and then I just like whack it in there. You know? Oh. Okay. Worst trend in snowboarding? Uh, I thought about this one, and I think right now it's probably not having titles and videos because I'm confused who's writing. Thank you. And this is also just, and I'm pretty good at it, like seeing who's who, but like my friends, like Casper and shit's like, he, like, what is the point? And as a writer myself, if I was in a movie and I had clips and they're all the, mixed together, I would want people to know that it's me, you know? We got to get somebody on here that's pro no titles to, yeah. to defend that because I want to hear the, I want to hear the pitch. Yeah. I want to hear the pitch on that. Okay. If you go heliboarding with three people and just good times, whack and pow turns. Yeah. Who are you taking? Who are you throwing in the hell? You got three. You get three seats. I don't know if this is accurate. It, Buds don't. Buds and I don't spend a lot of time in helicopters. Is it important to like the person know that what we're doing? Like as far Wait, as you're like, not going to tell them that they're going hellion. No, uh, no, I mean like know what we're doing as far as like Abby shit. No, 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 no. Like you can bring anybody <laughs> no, in the world. Yeah, like, like Young Dolly fun. brought Mike uh, Di- Mike Tyson. I'm the bring, guides are going to no, take I'm, care of all that bring for you. Somebody that snowboards or at least knows how to like get around. I'm going to bring the Warbingtons. Both of them. Just because we would have a lot of fun and talk shit. And what about you? Going to bring Chompy? Mm, the Chompy turtle? gets that would be sick. Dude. That would be sick. I would. Would I always so wanted. Dope, I, all, I, I always wanted a turtle, and I'm so jealous. You know, 
They have one. <laughs> the so third fun. seat, Chompy. Jumpy the turtle, just in the heli. Do you think he's going to be able to find the, the beacon <laughs> on the test I'm gonna d- before you go up? <laughs> I'm going to go Gus, Max Warbington, and my homie, Yano. Oh, Jano. Chompy's out. Chompy's out. He, he's Damn. a skater homie of mine who's a gnarly fucking skater, one of my best <clears> friends, and he is uh, lo- he loves snowboarding. He almost talks about it more than I do. I feel like Chompy would have handled the so power a little better than <laughs> he w- <laughs> But anyways, we'll let him in, yeah. I guess. It's your That's heli. my answer. It's your heli. Okay. This is a random one that I had from a different episode, but we're going to ask anyway. First try, backcountry pat down, like step down trick. What are you going to go with? Besides just airing it? You're not going to air it. We yeah, don't air, just gonna it. air we it. Don't That's air like it. That's scary on a big step down. Uh, You can't air it if you want. Switch back one. Switch back Uno. Yeah, because I'm landing regs. It's we, just 180. What are we grabbing? Um, MFM, no good. Either gun? like melon or nothing. It's What's melon, melon or nothing? Like your left hand? Switch. I'm, so you don't know I'm, what a melon is? Well, you melon. Can, when you're switch backside, melon can be like uh, regular switch, melon, which is like a switch oh, stale gotcha. fish. Switch or back on fakey yeah. stale, yo. Which hand's grabbing your left or your right? Right. Um, okay, so it's like a switch melon. Switch back yeah. one, switch melon is what I call yeah, it. Yeah, probably. And then I just tumble down the whole hill. <laughs> That's a f- <laughs> slow tum- tip forward. And just, tumble the yeah. whole hill down. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah, we tumbled in. Tommy. Mm-hmm. Tommy Hawk. Mm-hmm. Tommy Hook. Tommy Hawk figure. We happen to have uh, a guest question from none other than Brandon Reese. Yo, Freddie, it's Reese. Pretty cool you're on the bomb hole. That's a dream come true. Um, I got one question for you, something I think about all the time. Um, we filmed for Bench Press, and you had me cry in the shower with you that night. I mean... We definitely had some real tears going on, and I, I just wonder, what were we actually crying about, and what was it all for? <laughs> Love you, dog. Hope you're good. See ya. That's a good question. Also, uh, immensely underrated snowboarder. That guy's done some fucked up shit on snow and on snowboard. Um, what were we doing? Is it alligator me, tears? Or were we me talking? and Ca- me and Casper had just this like we wanted to make like. Dumb shit. We like dumb shit. So for bench press, we talked about doing every intro uh, for every rider would be just like a a life of them being sad. Just because, like, just random shit. No reason. And then it turned into crying. Like, it would be funny if they tried to cry, like legit cry. And then I filmed mine in the shower just to, like, show everybody what I was thinking. Just, like, because I was in the shower. Like, I had this person film me. And that's one we end up using. And I sent this to everybody. And it's like, then Jeff Holtz sent me one that was in the shower and then it's like oh shit let's just go with that everybody has to send me a clip in the shower that they're crying and once people sent me this shit we just like oh this looks really good together so it just ended up being like a montage in the bench press movie where like there's just a bunch of homies just being sad in the shower with a sad music sad song for no reason and people love it it's just to do something you know different and weird and meaningless i like when people go like "Hmm, whatever you know that's it and then Reese, I think we were at Troll, like at the Troll Project, I believe. So I had him and Ryan Paul get into the tub and like actually legit try to cry, like acting legit. Because it's not like you could pretend to cry and smile a little bit because it gets really awkward. But I wanted it to be like these guys were actually trying as hard as they can to look legit, l- legitimately like crying. That was not easy for those two dudes. And we were like laughing so fucking hard. Like they're they're holding around each other like this, look trying to look all serious in the camera. It took a bunch of takes, but it was just so fucking funny. And that's when you know how bad of an actor is it when you have to turn around and like look sad into a camera is really hard. Yeah. Good question. Interesting. We need, we need more crying shots in snow room movies, I think. So bringing people down, dude. No, it's a good is cry it though? Is good is it though? though? Is Why it though? not? Because when you people watching this shit, they're laughing, you know. Because oh, they, sometimes they're crying. They're crying. <clears throat> people cry. Sometimes they're crying. Uh, all right. It's interesting thinking about your. You know, I love what well, you brought up earlier. You talked about the Sean Genevieve biting graphic, and it is so true. It's almost like when you look at the world of like snowboard videos, like so, like uh, such a massive population of them are just people imitating Tanner Pendleton, basically. And, like, Mm. right? So, or, like, it's just, like, there's, like, the world of, like, that. And then, there, but there's, like, there is, there's just, like, a big lack of uh, originality. Mm. 
And it seems, I, I just want to say, A, I commend you for the originality and and authenticity. And, and it's like, look at Dino's. Like, Dino's is so sick because it's, like, authentic. Maybe even to a fault. And uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> like, 100. Yeah, like... Wahane. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. It seems like you're somebody that is so authentic that you'd be... You'd be doing it no matter what. You ain't doing it for a check. You're just doing it. I mean, obviously, you want to do it for a check, but like Oof, whether what I love <laughs> that skrilla, yo. Mm. <laughs> that tasty skrilla. <laughs> smells so good. Skrills. Mm hmm. Welcome to the bomb hall, guys. You got a is this a dream come true? Uh, I've I told uh, Chris about the it for other like night 10, that I that I'd had a dream one time that I was on here. You actually, I don't think I could say what happened. That was, a, that was an actual dream. <laughs> I woke up when I was oh shit! I dreamt I was on the bomb hall. In your penis was it a, TV? Was it a nocturnal <laughs> emission? Or? I can't remember if we were wearing clothes or not, but it was. It was a, like that. It was it was good. You know, it's good. he said he was gonna maybe wear a suit, but he didn't. Yeah, I he was trying to get a sponsor. I. I try. I hit up like two solid like, local like suit rentals to plug if I get a get a dope ass tuxedo, but I didn't get hit back. I got a couple of suits. Where are yeah, those but I wasn't are? like. Then we'd have to do the full limo thing. Oh, is this when we skip to the limo? The limo might be <laughs> known to the public by now. Yeah. yeah, I know, but like, you you pick me up in the suit and like we're yeah. all doing like we're doing a skit. Like, we should do a skit in the limo. Yeah, let's do it. If we have one, <coughs> cut to that right now, Julian. This, if we that's have when, one. That's when I did. Yeah, that's when I did. If there is a skit, let's cut to it. Yeah. <laughs> Little fun fact. This is the first episode we're doing with Julian, uh, in-studio producer. It's pretty today. tight. Let's give Julian an he's air doing horn. Good. Yeah, he's, he's doing, doing good. He's doing great. Oh, he's getting an air horn. He's yeah, getting an air horn. Good vibes. All right, Freddie, I know you're a big fan of uh, soccer, as we call it. Now, in, here in America, we... Uh, we like football, which is not what you guys refer to football. Mm. Um, it's a little bit more superior, you'd say. I'd say it's like a re- it's like more of a real sport. It kind of confuses me the two different names. Why, I don't know why soccer is superior. It. No, no, fo- American oh. football. You're so cute. <laughs> I mean, whatever you're gonna say is just gonna be cute. You know, I can't <laughs> argue with it. You're just a cute guy, just being all like football, you know, <laughs> with my hands. I mean, case closed, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You're not kicking the ball. Oh, you sometimes do. But that's rugby. They do that also. And they mm-hmm. call it rugby. So, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a big uh, big fan. We watched a really fun game, Champions League, up in... Uh, so I was with the snowboarder crew, Ted and Jill and Reed and all those guys. And it's a really fun trip. And we watched a game that was like the most unreal game I've ever seen. And all these guys were going, damn. Soccer's pretty sick. Maybe I should start watching it. And then I was like, yeah, but you have to know that this was not a normal game. There's a lot of boring shit also. Yeah. There's a lot of zero zeros, you know, just so you guys know. Watch a 90-minute game. The whole zero zero. It can be really it can be really boring, but you're also just hanging out with friends while you're doing it. What's and your ta- team? You're pretty much talking shit. Uh, my team is uh, Tottenham Hotspurs from London. Mm. Mm. It's a great team. They got I- a good style. Like They got a good a lot of good guys, good style, good mm. ethics, you know. What's your favorite American football team? Ooh, do I know any of them? Let's know tight if one. you don't know any of them. Do I know one? Warriors? Patriots? No, there's no Warriors. Warriors? Mm, no Try Warriors. again. See if you can get one. Uh, there's no way he can't name one. I don't watch it at all. I can name some. You might yeah, get, I'm just blanking. You might you get know. extradited for this. I hope so. Yeah, he's going to get deported or Patriots, something. Patriots, huh? it seems like such a serious team. Like, ooh, you know, that's not definitely not my vibe. New England Patriots? What's like the goofy team? Oof. I don't think there is a goofy team, is there? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> They're all kind of serious. Yeah, everything's pretty serious. Pretty serious. Yeah. A lot it's like your snowboarding. Sport. Yeah. It's like very, serious. very serious. A Snowboarding's of, a really... A lot of money yeah. exchanging hands. I want to let you know, uh, Freddie. Vi- Vikings, let's go. There Maine. you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll make some Midwest. Yeah, dogs Midwest. Happy. Sure. I'm, I love the Midwest. You know what, though? That's like a Norway. That's a Norway thing. Yeah. Some Vikings. Yeah. But you don't have Viking blood. You got, you got I'm no- half, half. Yeah, he's oh, like... you are. Yeah. New Zealand? Is that what you decided? Yeah, my dad's from New Zealand, so half New Zealand. Jay Berg. <laughs> yeah, I always wondered why you had the, uh, your weird kind of a different accent. Yeah. 
That's, I always wonder why you talk so fucking yeah, weird. So fucking, yeah. I mean, it out. doesn't defend all the dumb shit I say, though, but the way I say it, maybe. You got to remember, Freddie, you got to take snowboarding really seriously. It's really important. It's a real it's serious kind of crazy sport how or I take form. How seriously I take it, and anybody else, how seriously we take it, because it's literally the dumbest shit <laughs> ever invented, but it's so fun and stupid. But yeah. All right. Any advice? If you could go back in time, give little fourteen-year-old uh, Freddie Perry some advice. Mm. What would you tell him in regards to life and/or your snowboard, air I, quotes, career? I would say don't hit that jump at Tacky Invitational that blew your knee out. Just don't do it. And as far as this advice, probably just what I'm trying. What what I'm trying to do now is be better at just following my gut instinct. Because I'm a chronic overthinker, which is a curse and a blessing. It's a curse when it comes to when negative shit happens in your life and, like, trying to sleep. Like, I put my head down on my pillow. It's like, like, fucking Schumacher, Formula One time. Let's go, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, try to ease the mind. Maybe just follow your gut, which I've been trying to do the past few weeks, and it's been uh, helping out. It's been It's been good. The blessing of that is that you probably come up with some amazing ideas. When oh that, yeah, the when blessing that mind isn't isn't is spinning. That I can can come up with fun stuff that I can try to do that then stresses me out doing because it's a lot of work and but it's also fun. The end product is all, always okay. I got one it. more Patreon. Yeah, hit it. Ooh. It's from our good friend. He is going for a three for gut gout. Mm. Oh, gout gout the, god the gout man gout, gout god gout the, yeah. Uh, dream sponsor and dream project. Uh, I when I was a kid, I was like Disney snowboards would be so sick, but I don't know if they're so like legit actually. Dream sponsor? What? It, maybe like what chocolate milk? Some yeah, some you sort said of you love chocolate milk. That'd be some a sort great of sponsor. chocolate milk company that's like no lactose and it's like got some protein in there. It's kind of he- like healthy ish, but it tastes really good. I've traveled a lot and I usually always try the chocolate milks in the area, and nothing compares to the Norwegian powder one that you mix called Oh Boy. It's fucked good, but it fucks my stomach up now that I have IBS. So I don't know. Something, uh, something chocolate milky would be very easy for me to in- endorse. You know, mm. that'd be tight. What yeah. about Freddie Perry, the brand? Yeah. Uh, or what's it called? Fred Perry. Fred Perry. They got some dope shit. That would be a cool sponsor. But it's like, yeah, be cool. I guess. Okay. And what was the other one? Dream. Dream project. Dream project. <sighs> um. My dream project is one that I pitched to some sponsor before that I can still probably make is uh, a project with Tucker Andrews called Face Off where we would dress up exactly the same. We'd have all the same gear and we'd have the uh, we'd fuck with the titles thing like we'd mix it up. So I would do we would do the same tricks and stuff. But then sometimes it would say Tucker when I'm writing and sometimes it would say Fred when he's writing. But sometimes it would say Fred when I'm writing. We try to confuse the the viewers. But in the background, there's some scenes of, like, us arguing and stuff. And, like, what's up with the bad vibes in this thing? And at the end, it was just because we were in love, you know? And we were confused about our feelings. And maybe we, like, maybe that's what was what was up with this. So maybe it's just like a love story trying to enlighten some of that stuff, too. So after the people leave the, leave the theater, they'd be like, what the fuck was that? That was sick. Nicholas yeah. Cage and uh, John Travolta. Face off. Face yeah. off. Okay. Great movie. Okay. All right. We're, we're going to talk setups. Walk us through your Dino's Pro model with the fake sliders. This is a. Do I pick it up or what? No, do don't pick it up. We'll put it on the screen and then you just all talk right. about it so your audio is not all messed up. So, uh, this. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. Um, <laughs> this is a Dinosaurs Will Die Genius uh, board 153. You have the D equals. Uh, WD-153 squared. Is that an actual formula? That's a formula <laughs> that you need when you poop <laughs> a lot. And that's me. Uh, with This is the font that I found that was the closest to the old Genius logo. I didn't pay for it. Sorry, font guy. I paid for like a mini rights one. This is We have the sliders, the fake sliders, and this is the green that's inspired by Kim Jones. And we have the uh, some black bent metal bindings that I think are really comfortable. Uh, my stance right now is OG. Duck stance, trying it out. I think it's like nine nine or something. It's true switch, like identical. That's my stance. Mid flex board, pretty fun. 150, 153, 156. Get some complaints that we don't have bigger sizes, but hey, there's other boards on the <coughs> dyno line. Bigger boards. The Holtz, for example. Yeah. That's my SETI. Okay. Uh, I want to let the listeners know that we have a beautiful 
photo of you doing a board slide on a sea rail from Klaus Christensen. Uh, shout out to Klaus for sending us that. And Dope if you're, if you're interested in supporting him, you can check out megajoink.com. He's got some really cool art and prints for sale on there. And mm. then you can check out the signed Freddie Perry print if you want that masterpiece on your wall, bombhole.com. Not bhole.com. Don't type that in. Bumhole? Don't, it? don't type that in. <laughs> Last question. What's next for Freddie Perry? Um, what is next? Honestly, I wasn't gonna snowboard this. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna try to film this year, really, because I was like, coming out of school, I was like, dude, I can get a legit job as a creative and make a lot of money, which is not something I'm motivated by, but like, it would be nice, so I could afford rent and nozzle and bullshit. And then I went to Innsbruck. Ethan Morgan invited me to the Innsbruck thing. I was like, uh, I, I want to come, but do I have to snowboard? And he's like, I mean, ideally, but you do whatever you want. And I went there, and I pretty much fell in love with snowboarding again because it was a ridiculously amount of fun. I got to see a lot of my friends again, and I, f I got a lot of feeling of like, whoa, shit, people do like the stuff that I made, and like, I don't need all this other shit. Like, ev like my friends are like, like, they want me in this thing, you know? So I just had a really good time, and on the train from Innsbruck to Munich – which is like an hour and a half, I was like, man, 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 I'm moving out of my apartment next week. I haven't really, I was going to deal with it, like get a new place. But I was like, or I could just go to the States and snowboard. So I went to Minnesota. It all happened very quickly. Fell in love with it again. And then I started filming some stuff. And it's like, oh, shit, maybe I should just go roadie push 2024. So that's what's going on right now. Why not? Roadie? Kids on the hunt for a rider of the year. Threesome, like, fucking, I'm, I'm ready to just go with the flow, follow my gut instinct, and then... I get this crazy acting gig in Hollywood and, you know. I love do it. Do some limo skits. And Incredible. Try to be try to be happy. I don't know. That's okay. all you can hope for, right? You that is all I'm hoping for, actually. Do you want to throw any thank yous up? I do want to make the easiest 50 bucks I've made in my life because Eric Leon bet me that I couldn't say his name on the podcast and he bet me $100 and I was like, you're an idiot if you're going to give me $100. And he goes, what about 50? I'm like, fine. To say Sh his name? So easy. And he's like, oh, you have to have context. But then it's like, dude, you shook my hand before you said that. So Eric Leon, 50 bucks. Also, Nick Baden gave me this beanie. He, This is a lampshade beanie that he makes himself. That's his brand? Lampshade.brother. Check it out on Instagram. Brother, I'm on the it, team. Yes, I made the Instagram handle happen, and this is my beanie that he gave me. Uh, I also got a. Uh, I one of my one of my talents is uh, nicknaming people, and I just got a new nickname for Nick Baden, which is Nick Naiman, which is an interesting way to have actual nickname. Nickname in your nickname. Nick Naiman. Think about Nick that. I, so I thank like you, that. Nick Naiman. Lampshade up, brother. Up. Shop, That's brother. My shout out. And the dinos. Brother. Dang. Bat Metal. Session Board Shop. Thank you for the support. Thank you guys also. Dream come true. Well, thanks for coming on the show. That was a wonderful, wonderful hangout. All right, Frederick. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us here on the B-Hole. We really appreciate you. Uh, first of all, before we get out of here, I want to remember, check out your new project, Eclipse. Mm-hmm. AKA five clips. Which is spelled wrong when you add the ending of it, five clips, which I like. I th hope people will be like, dude, this guy's an idiot. He's spelling eclipse wrong. You know? Let's see. Be sure to watch it. It's a masterpiece. You will LOL, as the kids say. It's a masterpiece, certified. <clears throat> uh, and thank you so much for coming on the show and, and being just holding a great space in snowboarding that is needed in a lighthearted, keeping it fun world of our big, serious sport. So thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, it means immensely much to me, like, actually, that you guys invited me. It's a big honor because, I mean, after you guys asked me, and once we confirmed what date and shit, it was like, next episode <laughs> that came out was Travis Rice. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Is, what? <laughs> like, I'm, like, it just felt surreal to even be in the same, like, arena? universe as an arena as that, that guy. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much. It's been really fun. Salt Lake is pretty fun. Sometimes. It's pretty fun. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> all right. We appreciate everybody for tuning in, uh, supporting the Thank show. You guys. All our Patreon members, all our sponsors. You guys kick ass. Uh, we got another episode coming at you next Wednesday. Over and out from the bomb hole.